spotlight. I have a few stories to run by. A Manhattan criminal court judge has denied John of the Major's motion to set aside his conviction in his domestic violence case. Uh, the sentencing will move forward on Monday as scheduled. A jury found that Majors uh, was guilty of assaulting and harassing his then-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. He was convicted of one count of misdemeanor third-degree assault, one count of second-degree harassment, but acquitted of two other counts of assault and aggravated uh, harassment in a split verdict. He faces up to a year in jail on the two counts. I doubt he'll get that much. So 30,000 view on all this. Do you think he gets the career back? Or, and if he gets mm -hmm. it back, how long will it take? Yeah, I, I think eventually he will act again, but I don't think it's going to happen for no a long time. No time soon, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jabari, by the way, sued him for defamation and other alleged injuries last month, by the way, to a, uh, according to a civil complaint. Uh, she is seeking damages for her physical injury. She said that she suffered as a result of the incident. She also claimed Majors committed intentional, inflictional, and emotional distress against her and made knowingly false statements about her as well. So that continues. This was out of the blue, and I'm sure you saw this, Steve. Reacher star yeah. Alan Richson, who is a behemoth of an individual... He is, if you have not seen the show Reacher, it's an action show. This man is a walking mountain. He is, yeah, as formidable yes. a person as you've ever seen. He is opening up about a sexual assault at the hands of a photographer that happened earlier in his career. In an interview for The Hollywood Reporter, Richin addressed his experiences in the modeling industry, um, and he enjoyed uh, his former career. Uh, he said, I was booked for a shoot for this very famous photographer. I was sent into a hotel room to do nudes with the promise if I did the shoot, he would offer me a very lucrative campaign for a magazine and clothing line. And then he just flat out said, I was sexually assaulted by this guy. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I quit the industry. He said, after, after he confronted the agency about uh, sending him to the shoot, he stopped altogether, said, I quit the industry. And it was the last photo shoot I ever had. Those pictures were never seen or published. That was it. I swore it off, and thank God acting found me at the exact time, uh, exact same time. So I was able to make a switch to a new career, uh, but it left some scars. And he did not reveal who the photographer was. So he's been on a podcast that I, I um, uh, follow, uh, Michael Rosenbaum, who played uh, Lex Luthor on Smallville. Mm -hmm. And he turns out he's really good you know, with interviewing celebrities. And so um, he's appeared on his show twice. He's battled with a bipolar condition. He's a very um, uplifting guy and very um, inspirational. But he's uh, he had a, 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 a near suicide, a successful suicide attempt. Um, so he's had all this on his life. But And you think about a guy that big, but remember Terry Crews um, yeah. claims he was sexually assaulted yeah. by a producer. So these two guys, Alan Richin and him, do a podcast together? He appeared on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast okay. twice and, and talks about his life and the... And how he's able to, how he freed himself from the demons of, of you know, being bipolar and all of these things. Alan Richson? Yeah. Wow. Uh, he also compared his career in modeling to human sex trafficking, saying that the industry is not regulated. He said it's a widely known secret that if you're hired on a job, you're basically being passed off to a photographer to be trafficked. He said the number of times and situations where I was put in horrific environments where sexual abuse was the goal and the paycheck that you were desperate for in order to survive was the carrot. I couldn't count on two hands. I, I can't count on two hands. It was quite often. Although Richin acknowledged the harrowing situation, he acknowledged that it's worse for women. He said, you're always dancing around this very terrible line of, how do I keep the job and not completely offend this photographer or this agent or whoever set this thing up? And how do I not get raped? Mm -hmm. I completely uh, empathize with women who deal with dynamic power struggles with predatory people in the workplace. He said, it's still unfair. But if I really had to, I could get myself out of whatever room I was in through a physical altercation. Most women don't have that option. Imagine how terrifying it must be. Uh, and he recently got into a physical altercation in January. He made headlines after detailing his attempt to stop a robbery while walking to a dinner date with his wife in Montreal. The pair observed somebody who was breaking into a car and ignored the advice, uh, the advice from his wife to not get involved in the situation. But he went into reacher mode <laughs> and chased the person for four blocks until he tossed him into a building and the cops came and got him. That's one of the singular joys of watching Reacher. Like when they, 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 in, in the beginning of season two, he, you know, there's a woman who's being held hostage. She's at an ATM machine and he comes up in his cool Reacher way and he says, you know, is that your vehicle? And, and, and discerns quickly that she's in a bad way and just... 
you know, just takes care of it. bulldozes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty, it's an awesome show. Um, George Carlin's estate has agreed to a settlement with the media company it sued earlier this year over the use of artificial intelligence. Uh, Carlin's estate sued the podcast company called Dudzy, Dudzy after recreating Carlin's iconic comedic style in an hour-long special titled George Carlin, I'm Glad I'm Dead. And the settlement indicates that, indicates that Dudzy is requiring to permanently remove the special and cannot use Carlin's image, voice, or likeness in the future without written consent from the estate. The settlement reached the demands made by Carlin's estate. Along with the removal, they were also seeking unspecified you know, monetary yeah, damages. Yeah, you'd, 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 you'd wonder how they would think they could get away using the image and his his comedic <sighs> stylings. I guess AI is a kind of uncharted territory yeah, and we have yeah. to go through these things right. and somebody's going to try stuff until they go, mm, until the law says, no, nah, you can't do that. Right. But right now, it was a settlement. Right. So we'll see where the law goes. The lawsuit had stated none of the defendants had permission to use Carlin's likeness for the AI-generated George Carlin special, nor did they have a license to use any of the late comedian's copyrighted materials. Dudesy creates uh, various AI-generated materials, but it's primarily a podcast hosted by comedian Will Sasso and writer Chad Cl- uh, Kultgen. Uh, the company, as well as both men, were named as defendants in the suit. Uh, the plaintiffs were listed as Carlin's estate as well as executor uh, Gerald Hamza. And following the settlement agreement, his daughter, Kelly, uh, Carlin's daughter, Kelly, issued a statement saying, I'm grateful that the defendants acted responsibly while swiftly removing the video they made. While it is a shame that this happened at all, I hope this case serves as a warning about the dangers posed by AI technologies and the need for appropriate safeguards, not just for artists and creatives, but every human on earth. So the, 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 Will, the Will Sasso does stuff where they'll take an actor and place them in a movie that's not a movie, you know, you know Tom Hanks in something very vicious or whatever. And um, and it's very funny, but, yeah. you know, you're right. We're still kind of finding out where this is going. Yep. So Dwayne Rock Johnson will be welcoming a late wrestling trailblazer, his grandmother, into the WWE Hall of Fame. Wow. Yeah, and I didn't know this about, I knew about his father and all, uh, but it goes deeper, wrestling into his family. Johnson will induct Leah Mavia. Uh, one of the first women promoters of professional wrestling into the WWE Hall of Fame, class of 2024, on Friday. Uh, maybe a Johnson's, uh, who is Johnson's grandmother, and his late grandfather, legendary wrestler Peter High Chief Mavia, established one of the most prominent families in the sport. They were both Samoan. Johnson called Mavia the real final boss. He said, she took over my grandfather's wrestling company here in Hawaii, and she made a promise to my grandfather when he was dying on his deathbed. She said, I'm going to take over the company and I'm going to make your dream come true. And it's going to be a success. Uh, the late promoter took over Polynesian Pro Wrestling, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance's territory in Hawaii, after her husband died in 82. And there she was tasked with promoting a hot summer night, a widely anticipated lineup, including the likes of Andre the Giant, Ric Flair, and Rocky Johnson, her son-in-law. Uh, the event drew more than 20,000 people. She died in 2008 posthumously joins her husband in the Hall of Fame. So I that think is that's, cool. That's so that's, that sitcom that he had that was sort of a quasi-biography uh, of his own, you know, these years uh, was pretty informative because they had all the wrestlers. They were they, they were constantly sitting around his kitchen table. You yeah. know, the legends of wrestling were his dad's buddies. And uh, she was portrayed in that as well. Um, and wh- an interesting story about her where she was eventually, uh, apparently... He said her tough business practices caught her up, uh, caught up with her as she was indicted by the FBI, FBI on extortion Whoa. charges. Uh, while she was eventually acquitted, Johnson wrote that the FBI later charged her with illegal immigration, froze her assets, and deported her. He said, by 1991, my grandma was homeless. In 92, I was able to identify a legal loophole and get her back legally into the U.S. I was also able to secure uh, social security for her legally and moved her into a one little uh, a little one-room apartment in Tampa, once I started making some decent money uh, in WWE, I bought our condo where she would live happily for the rest of her life a few miles away from us in South Florida. Wow. That's pretty wild. Yeah, interesting story, right? Uh, Sean Diddy Combs' ex-girlfriend, Misa Hilton, uh, said federal agents used excessive force against a rap mogul son as she shared new footage of the raid on his Los Angeles home last month. The Department of Homeland Security searched his home in L.A. and Miami. Uh, several outlets reported that the raid was part of a sex trafficking investigation citing unnamed law enforcement sources. That still hasn't really fully been confirmed yet, but I don't know what's going on. What I hear, he would ha- he would throw these, uh, was has been known to throw these legendary parties 
where these buses would roll up and there would be women uh, who are, were of questionable age. Right. And so I haven't seen anything verifying that there were actually women who were uh, illegal and uh, underage, but that's that's the crux of all this. Uh, Diddy's lawyer, Aaron Dyer, described the search as excessive, um, and uh, he is facing four civil lawsuits brought against him over the last six months. Hilton criticized the raid on Instagram, and she shared footage that appeared to be taken from surveillance cameras inside and outside of the home. Uh, the video appears to show federal agents driving to the property, entering it, detaining Justin York Combs, uh, which is his 30-year-old son with Hilton, and Christian Combs, uh, his 26-year-old son with the late Kim Porter. Uh, the brothers were not charged after the raid. Uh, she had said, the overzealous and overly materialized force used against my son, uh, my son's Justin and Christian, is deplorable. Uh, she said, if these were the sons of non-black celebrity, uh, they would not have been handled with the same aggression. The surveillance footage appeared to show Christian Combs being handcuffed against the wall and officers pointing firearms at Justin Combs. I, I, I don't, it didn't look like what I think to be as excessive. Yeah, force. it looked pretty it standard. Like, you know, actually, armed, yeah. armed detaining, right? Uh, which can scare anybody, of course. So, but uh, yeah, they're they're coming out uh, with all this. Combs' lawyer uh, maintained the star's innocence. So we'll see where this ends up going. It's probably not a good idea to post any of this stuff on Instagram. Yeah, right yeah. Now. I know. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it either, Stephen. Like, listen, uh, maybe they have a case. Maybe they don't. I don't know the details. I, I yeah. you know. So whatever. This is not an opinion on whether or not he has he's guilty. But like, why make that stuff public while it's still so fresh. I, I don't oh, know. I don't get it. Yeah, You're not going to dissuade the FBI. Exactly. You're right. not going to dissuade this mechanism that's been in place for forever. You're going to yep. make it worse. And yeah, they, they have resources to make your life more, far more miserable. Yeah. Uh, this was interesting. Rebel Wilson has disclosed that she lost her virginity at the age of 35 huh. uh, to actor Mickey Gooch Jr., according to her memoir, Rebel Rising. Uh, she confirmed that Gooch was the first person to read her book. Opening up about her experience, uh, she explained that her mother's breast cancer diagnosis influenced her decision, leading her to embrace life and take the plunge. So she had remained a virgin up until then. Uh, she also shared that she prepared by watching porn <laughs> and using a vibrator. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah, the, the, I think most sex therapists would recommend what? that. Well, she prepped. I mean, yeah. if you haven't done it, there's there's a little fear there, especially sure. for, for women. So she said, I'd imagine having sex and being intimate and everything would always be in my head. And now I'm someone who lives much more in my body, and I'm loving it. Uh, well, Wilson and Gooch eventually split a few months after dating. Uh, Wilson's intention was to inspire others by including this anecdote in a memoir, reassuring readers that there is no set timeline for losing one's virginity. Is she is she gay? I yes. Thought she was. She, well, yeah. she, she is, or, or whatever she she declares herself as, but she is currently with a woman. Okay. Okay. Uh, Conan O'Brien set to make his long way to return to NBC's Tonight Show on April 9th. Uh, the appearance will mark the first since his abrupt departure from the show 14 years ago. Uh, he will join, of course, Jimmy Fallon to discuss his new series, Conan O'Brien Must Go, which will be streaming on Max. That's a great show. If you've, uh, he, he travels around the world. He's a really good travel guide and goes to some cool places. Uh, he previously hosted Late Night with Conan O'Brien on NBC for almost two decades. After his departure from The Tonight Show in 2009, he went on to host Conan on TBS for number 11. And yes, he is an international traveler now, and he visits friends that he's made through his podcast. And uh, he's having success with that. So recently on his on his podcast, he's they they had an elaborate chronological breakdown of him getting the Tonight Show, losing the Tonight oh, Show, yeah. the the depression that followed that, all of that stuff. It is, yeah, it's it's funny. You can't help the way he tells it, the way everyone around him tells it. But at the time, it was like. What the hell's going on? Yeah. Uh, real quick, Steve, you watch that podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, That's what I do, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I just, watch it, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't listen to it either, so I, I just wanted to be sure. I think Conan would have been just as successful as Jimmy uh, he have, had yeah. he stayed in that role. He is so talented. He's got his own his own way, his own style, but I think that would have resonated with that audience. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And they, they just, the thing was, is that no one was going to pull the trigger, and they had Leno... And Leno had been delivering for them. Yeah. I mean, they can't argue that. I get it. Yeah. But had they have thrown all of that effort into allowing Conan the time to succeed, he would have. Yeah. All right. Neo is getting a new look courtesy of a new entry in the Matrix franchise. 
What? Warner Brothers announced the studio is in the works on the new Matrix installment, courtesy of Oscar-nominated filmmaker Drew Goddard, who wrote the screenplay for The Martian and mm -hmm. co-wrote and directed The Cabin in the Woods. Uh, Goddard will write and direct the new Matrix movie for the studio, as well as produce with partner Sarah Esberg. So the last Matrix movie um, was terrible. Uh, uh -huh. It was the one that was done by one of the Wacharskis, uh, and uh, it was bad. So The Matrix writer, director, and co-creator Lana Wachowski is executive producing. No casting or plot details are happening as of yet. If you watch that last movie, it is basically um, her, uh, Lana, telling you how much she hates doing these, this movie. Oh, like, yeah? like, like it, is, it is a meta sort of approach to The Matrix, yeah. and it's like... It it just it, it it is a movie that hates itself. I thought it was very forgettable. Yeah, yeah, and I have forgotten. Yeah, yeah, like all that I don't remember all yeah, that yeah, because yeah. I it, it was it was too much, and the story had already been told. And uh, at the end of the first Matrix, did I want more? Sure, because it was a great right. groundbreaking movie. But then I've realized in the past it should have just been we should have just left it to our imagination. I know. I you know, know what I mean. The first one was perfect. It was so good. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Ehrman, Warner Brothers Motion Picture President of Production, said the uh, uh, Drew came to Warner Brothers with a new idea that we all believe would be an incredible way to continue the Matrix world by both honoring what Lana and Lily began over 25 years ago and offering a unique perspective based on his own love of the series and characters. So. Do you know it was a blast though when they that first Matrix video game that came out? Did you play that? I did not. Yeah, it gave you that ability to run up the walls and all oh, that stuff. Oh, that was really cool. Uh, by yeah, the way, that was really cool. <laughs> uh, the uh, the director Drew Goddard uh, is had previous, or he's also writing. Had also written Cloverfield and World War Z. So well, that was a really I'm good. All that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, and he was, it was also behind uh, credits had uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Alias, Lost, Daredevil, The Good Place. So there's some good pedigree there. We'll see. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Mario Van Peebles has been chosen to direct That'll Be the Day, an upcoming film about Buddy Holly and the birth of rock and roll. Huh. Uh, the movie will explore how uh, Buddy and other musicians from the late 1950s in influenced the culture. So I'm a fan of the Buddy Holly story. I know uh, one super famous person hates it, Paul McCartney, not a big fan of the, uh, the Buddy Holly. When it first came out, yeah. because they took a lot of liberties, but... They do that in a lot of yep, biopics, yep. you know. I like it. It's a good movie. Uh, also, speaking of biopics, Air Supply what? is going to have a movie <laughs> titled Whoa! All Out of oh Love, God. The Air Supply Story, right. released in 2025 to celebrate their 50th anniversary. And the film will focus on the band's rise to fame and be filmed in Australia and the UK. I mean, you, you can't argue it. These songs were mega hits. They were huge. Was it like, Lost in Love? Lost in Love? Yeah. Yeah. And these guys still tour, man. Yeah. Nick just pulled up their tour date. They're going to be in Atlantic City on uh, August 9th. <laughs> Where in Atlantic, Atlantic City? City? I don't know. <laughs> they're just hanging out. Okay. They're, At they're this point. Swinging by the Starbucks. I think oxygen supply is probably more appropriate. <laughs> yeah. right. All right. Uh, two more quick things, and then we'll get to the clips. Uh, Julia Garner has joined the cast of Marvel Studios' Fantastic I'd Four. Like I knew it. Uh, I knew it. Garner <laughs> and her pool boy, Ben Affleck. Julia. Incorporating them into my fantasy life. Julia Garner. Uh, so she's going to be... I apologize <laughs> to anyone who's been offended <laughs> by my fictional creations, Chris Agon, the philosopher of evil, uh, and the skull ceiling. Oh, yeah, she's awesome, by the way. Yeah, she's going to play, uh, she's going to be in the Fantastic Four reboot, and uh, she's going to play Shalabal. Shalabal! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which, is a, which is a version of the Silver Surfer character. Yeah, I, <laughs> to be honest, I would like a standalone Silver Surfer movie, uh -huh. which we haven't. We Silver Surfer appeared in one of the Fantastic Four films, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, any any version is going to be cool. She's in that uh, commercial with George Clooney for. Nespresso? His Nespresso, right? Yeah. Is she? Nespresso. Okay. Yeah, that's his brand. Uh, the other cast includes Pedro Pascal, Vanessa. Sha -la -la -la. Uh, Vanessa Kirby, uh, Evan Moss Backrack, and Joseph Quinn. So the film follows, of course, family of scientists who gain superpowers after being exposed to radiation and a mission in outer space. Um, and Matt Shakeman, uh, the director behind One Division, will be directing. So, okay. Uh, um, she's going to probably be pretty much all CGI then. Kathy, you know her. Garner uh, yeah. was in uh, Ozark. She played uh, Ruth, and uh, she was also in Anna. Uh, the. Uh, 
Yeah, what was it called? Inventing Anna, isn't it? Inventing Anna, thank you. Uh, and she starred in uh, Kitty Green's gripping thriller, The Royal Hotel, as well. Uh, Fantastic Four hits theaters July of 2025. Last story. Uh, more Matt Reif is coming out on Netflix. Uh, following his comedy special, Natural Selection, in November 2023, uh, he will have two more specials at Netflix. You're a big fan, right, Kathy? Uh, I do, I do like, I just see him on social media. Like I yeah. watch his stuff on social media and I think it's really funny. I had a couple of friends that went to the show. Um, you know, they weren't blown away, but they said it was funny. Okay. Uh, the first in Rife's two special deals set to release later this year. It'll be Netflix first ever full length crowd work special. And Which we'll is shoot, what he's good. That's what he's good at. Right. And uh, he'll shoot at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, his natural selection brought in more than 10 million views in the first few weeks of its release, along with reaching the global top 10 in 42 countries. So he's had great success so But far. he blew us off, right, Case? Well, I mean, he blows everybody off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there, there is a, there's a, a new crop of uh, young comedians coming up who have had a... Um, a lot of success on social media, and that has ported over to their their stage shows, and uh, and so they're not grinding the same way that some of these other comedians have, uh, right? And, uh, and so that pisses me off. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. There's a new guy. There's a guy who's playing Punchline this weekend. His shows are already sold out. I can't get a sniff. His name's Ralph Barbosa. You know, right? And, and it's he, not like they were booked and backed out. We just you just can't. Book we just them, no because right? I mean, listen, Matt Rife is doing shows at Helium that sold out before they even went on sale, essentially, and he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to hustle the right. same way some of these other guys do, you know. So you have somebody like Burt Kreischer, who has, you know, he he man he works he, at he and he but he hustled for years and years yep. and years, and so he has a different appreciation for where he is, and I just don't think that. Uh, that Matt and, these young whippersnappers, and, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to act like that. But you know, I do get like I am a little bit butthurt. But you know, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think. But it's also, legit. I I took a lot of uh, pleasure in the fact that I didn't think Matt Rice last, <laughs> last Netflix special was good. I didn't think, and I, I have You're prided happy myself. To say that, right? I'm very happy to say that because yeah. I listen and I love stand up comedy. I have been a a fan of it for a long, 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 long time. And I didn't go into that special just waiting to hate it. Right. You know what I mean? I I really wanted the and I was like, this is good. That's not good stand-up comedy. Uh, speaking of people who haven't come into our studio but we really want, I think Celeste is coming back. Celeste Barber. She is. And we're, oh. we're working oh, on it right okay, now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Do you think it's... I, um, Casey, correct me if I'm wrong because I very well could be wrong. Do you think it's the, the bubble surrounding them? It, I don't think the request gets... It to could the be person, the bubble. Right? It could be the bubble. Um... At certain times, I think there is a bubble. Uh, with Matt, there was no, no. I, it was at Helium. There's no bubble there. Like, right, we know the owners no of Helium. Well, no, listen, first with, with Meredith, and I know Meredith is going to give, give the good old college effort, uh, but we also know the owners of Helium. And so, right, if but it they're not to talking Brad, directly to him, are they? Um, they're getting closer than anybody else will. Right, so I yeah. think, Nick, I think the bubble you're talking about is the people surrounding people like Mac, Matt Reif. Exactly. Yeah. I don't place all of the blame directly on Matt Reif's shoulders or Ralph Barbosa's shoulders. I place it on the bubble around him. Right. Okay. So with Ralph Barbosa, for instance, um, I went to other comedians, believe it or not. Ah. At first, I went through like Live Nation and Punchline. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, let me hit up Big J Okerson. Let me hit up these guys, other guys that like hang with them. And dude's like, nah, I don't feel like doing it. I'm like, okay. Okay, so you, uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. All right. All right. There's, little, a pro there's a process to all this. A little peek behind the curtain. Yeah. This is yeah. what goes into getting the guests on the show. Uh, there's another one happening right now. That I know we're moving on, Preston, but it's been pissing me and Casey off all week. Oh, yeah. sorry to hear that. That's, uh, I'll tell you off Was air. there a big event at the Lincoln Financial Field this weekend or something like that? <laughs> Casey, I got a nibble on something I'll tell you off air. Uh, cool, they're going to make you throw it up. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, can we do the uh, clips now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we on here? I think we're doing mystery clips. <laughs> yes, we yeah. are. Mystery clips. All right, if you, if you know who this is, and I'm planning to, because I have not looked yet. Yay! Let us uh, wait, uh, wait. raise I'm your ready. hand. What? I, no, 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 I'm ready. I'm just thinking. <laughs> you, might, you might be able to get the first one. All okay. Right. Maybe. Well, the let's second see. one, not even a chance. Let's see. All right. All right, here we go. Raise your hand if you think you know. To see this character at the center of, like, a tornado messing up and making mistakes and being surrounded by redemption and forgiveness and people wanting to help her learn really felt like something I wanted to tell right now. You know now. who it is? Wait. You know who it is? Yes. I don't. I, 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 no. I was singing the movie Twister when she said tornado. Just, blank. Um, hmm. Damn it. Well, I don't even know who this is. No? No, I'm, no, I'm wondering if you're going to get it. Oh. Describe. Do you have any uh, uh, projects she's been in? Yeah. 
Come on. Height, weight. I, whatever it is, I watched it. <laughs> I know. Oh, I, oh, I, oh you did? I just watched something that she was in. Okay. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Her I, first I recognize- name starts with a G. I. Gianna. I. Gianna. 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 Rodriguez. You I had it. it. You had you it. Nailed it. God, yeah. Nailed her it. voice is so insane. Gina Rodriguez, Rodriguez. <laughs> is promoting Probably something. something. Uh, Marissa. In Not Dead Yet, a journalist gets life advice yes. from an oh. unlikely source. Oh. She I know can what it is. I, I, knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's Jane the Virgin. No. That's what I was gonna say. Yes. No, but that's what I that's, watched. Yeah, yeah, and right, I knew right. that voice. But uh, her actual uh, the, the the new show is actually pretty funny. Is I watched it? it the other night. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> It airs tonight on ABC. All right. All right. Next mystery clip that we're not going to get at all. No. It says no way. Here no we way. Go. Let's hit it. Even though the stakes are as high as they could possibly be, because there's a big thing in season five, there is also a, a great sense of adventure and fun um, that, you know, we were really adamant about injecting um, into the show. Why does that sound so familiar? So it's a I bit of a tonal shift that I think people will enjoy. She <laughs> sounds very familiar. Voice sounds season familiar. Five. Fifth season. I know. I don't know the name at all. Uh, it, Do you know it, the show? It, I'm guessing it's 9/11. I think it's oh. 911. This That's- actress, w- this actress is, I believe, also from the series Firefly. Ah. Okay. All right. Let's um, find all right. out from Marissa. I'll give it to you. All, all right, right. Uh, Marissa, who is it? Steve, this one's for you. The fifth and final season of Star Trek Discovery. Oh, it's a- Sinequa Martin. Is okay, and she was on The Walking Dead briefly. Was she? Yes, she was. Oh, okay. All right. All right. There you go. Uh, by and, the way, that show has uh, tanked a long time ago. <laughs> what, The Walking Dead? No, no, the uh, but but yeah, that. But uh, the, the, the Discovery is just not. Okay. It, it started out strong and and went south quickly. Uh, all right. Well, that's our entertainment report for the morning. Um, we have some things to get to, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick break and come back in a moment. Our friends from Nebraska Brazilian Steakhouse are going to be here. We're going to be giving away hundred dollar gift cards for that. We've never been to Nebraska. Dude, stop, yeah. stop eating now, <laughs> and when you go next week, you may be ready to fill yourself up. And uh, we're also going to have Allison Sweeney on the show, and Proper, Brian Prop has got an event coming up. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us, please. Metro traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thanks, Kath. I was looking at the uh, Instagram post for her story, which is Kathy's show here on weekends at MMR, who's this very... Lovely lady who I saw there. You saw Molly McGraw. Uh, she is a the lead yoga instructor uh, at Love and uh, Vision Fitness in Conshohocken. Uh, they kind of I, I mentioned to you guys before. They I kind of do this like modern spin on uh, a workout in this heated room with infrared lights. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not all yoga. It's other classes. It's also like laser tag too, right? <laughs> I mean, sometimes Steve, I'm <laughs> when I'm in there, I'm like, yeah, it feels a little like laser tag. Um, no, but yeah, it, it's just. Just a different spin on it. It's really interesting, her um, view on fitness. So she works uh, as a nurse in endocrinology, but she also kind of has this holistic approach to things. So she she blends the two. So she's got an interesting story. Right. That's cool. uh, and I'll talk to her on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. And you can hear it here uh, on WMMR. I've been trying to stretch every day, oh, like man. a couple of times a day. I haven't gotten into yoga yet, but I probably need to do that. Yeah, in the near you know what? Future. And um, so I have like some back issues, some lower back issues. It just is always hurting me, and I've kind of learned to to live with it. And working out in a heated studio has like made a world of difference. Really, I've, I've had to like stop for you know, kind of halt my workouts for oh months. My God, this is so hard. <laughs> No, I've had to stop my workouts for months when my back starts to hurt. Huh? Um, but what I do instead now is go into this heated studio, do the workout in there, and it's like a game changer for me. So you go in and, and does it have the effect of sort of rendering you pre-warmed up? Uh, like in other just, words? Yeah, it just loosens, yeah, loosens the muscles. Right, I'm able, right, right. Yeah, I'm able to get like deeper stretches in. Interesting. And, okay. Yeah. So yeah, Preston, really you're cool. not into yoga? Do you have half a brain? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Wait a minute. Is that uh, Pina Colada That's song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot about so that. So you brought up that song. Do you well, like Make Love at Midnight? Uh, I am going to I'm gonna talk about I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to talk about extreme laziness. Um, All there right. Was, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You got I'm in. <laughs> That's my workout. <laughs> Steve sent me an article from uh, cracked.com, which has some great lists on there. And it says uh, some funny things that people have done to avoid minor inconveniences. And it's essentially either 
going going out of your way to avoid something or also being really, really lazy. And I'll give you some examples and feel free to call in if you would like to add your personal examples of these. But uh, the people had submitted these things that they had done. And this one I, I can uh, identify with. It says, my lamp is a few feet away from the bed, but the outlet is right next to the bed. So I so just unplug, unplug oh the lamp. God. Yeah. When I want to go to sleep. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah. They, so That's really funny. Everyone has something of, of this nature, you know, and, and where you're just, ah, uh, I told you the other day, I, a lot of times I will just sit, the remote is across the room, I'll just watch what's on. Oh, I, I'll yeah. do that sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of remotes, I love this one. It says, my TV's at the foot of my bed, and if I can't read the descriptions on Netflix... I take a picture with my phone oh. and zoom in. I've done that. Instead yeah. of getting up or spending on the TV. I, I've done that because in, when I watch TV in my bed, I typically have my um, my glasses on right. and not my contacts. And my glasses, the, the strength of them are a little bit less than contacts. That's It's it's pretty normal when yeah. you wear glasses. Um, so yes, sometimes if it's, especially when they're reading a text message in a show, like oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Can't, I pause it, I take a picture, uh, oh, I zoom yeah. in, I'm like, oh. Oh my goodness! Okay, and then I can play again. <laughs> Instead of getting up and walking a little yeah, bit closer yeah. to the TV. Yes, because this is bedtime TV. I'm getting ready right? to go to bed. Yeah. I'm not getting out of bed. Oh my! God. You know how I took care of that, Kathy? I put a 65 inch yeah, yeah. set at the end of my bed. I need that. Steve. Yeah. Here's another one. Now, this isn't a laziness one. This is just avoiding uh, what you don't like. So this is my grandfather was adamantly opposed to paying tolls on roads, bridge, road, whatever it was. He would find a way around, and I once saw him drive nearly two hours out of his way <laughs> to avoid paying a $4 toll to go over a bridge. It was a bit ridiculous, and he definitely spent more on gas than he would have just to play, uh, just to pay the damn yeah, toll. Yeah, that's a different dynamic, but it's it similar. Is. It's yep. similar. I love the notion of, uh, and I think one of them there, Preston mentions this, where you're like sitting down and you're on the couch, and you'll wait for someone to come home. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you get? Could yeah. you get me? Can you get that for me? <laughs> like, hey, before you sit down. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Or yeah. you're. Uh, no, I won't get it now because I know my wife is going out right. a little bit. <laughs> I'll ask her when she's mobile uh -huh. to get it. Uh, so this is. Kind of along the lines of this, but I, I remember this story for years because she told it to me once, but it was my, just like Arani said, friend, uh, she told me one time, she goes, well, I, I made it to the gym parking lot today. Oh, wow. and, I go, and then what happened? She goes, I sat in my car for like five minutes and then I just went home. So she I've got dressed, put her gym clothes on, uh -huh. went to the gym, was in the parking lot and never actually got out of the car and went into the gym. She turned around and went home. It was raining a couple of weeks ago. and It was the same thing. I'm sitting there in the gym parking lot. And so sometimes You've made it. Like, I've made there. it. I'm there. Yeah. And I'm like, I just don't have, uh, I just don't want to get out of the car right now. It's raining. It's, it's miserable. And. Uh, well, I I find it funny though when I do go to the gym trying to find the closest parking spot to the door. Like yeah, right? I'm like, here to exercise. I'm here right? to like yeah. burn calories. Yeah. God forbid I walk an extra 25 <laughs> yards. <laughs> it's gonna wipe me out. Uh, let me go to a call here. I have John on the phone. Yo, John. Morning, bud. Morning, guys. Hey, what's up, man? So you guys touched on it, uh, having to get up to get a beer out of the fridge. <laughs> yes, it's pretty inconvenient. Yep. So what I did was I had a kid. Oh, <laughs> playing the long game. Yeah. Very yeah. good. And after, four, after four years, you can reach them. So yes. Good. I don't have to yeah. Go as long as you, you're, you're looking down the road, you, you've got you've got plans for the future. I like that, John. Yeah. Very, uh, very forward thinking. Of have you. children. Thanks, John. For your menial tasks. I love this one. It says more times than I care to admit. I've given Old Navy about 60 bucks to avoid doing laundry. Oh, well, wow. well, here's to stop off and buy some new stuff. Stuff on the way home. Yeah. I have the largest collection <laughs> of, workout of workout clothes because <laughs> uh, that's exactly me. And when uh, Lord and Taylor was up the road here, they had the very cheap, you know, sweatpants that yeah. I would wear. So I just uh, hell, I'll just go buy them because he uh, wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to stop home, stop. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so he would just go buy new clothes. <laughs> um, I have a friend who buys uh, new underwear and new, just like white T-shirts. Um, every time he goes away, and then when, like when he's in a hotel room, he just leaves he just them. Leaves he leaves them? Yep. Yeah. 
just just leaves him. Just the, because it doesn't want to take the hassle of traveling laundry, with him? Laundry, <laughs> traveling with him. Wow. Yeah, so, so he travels for work. He goes from, from hotel to hotel. Okay. So instead of having oh. to, like, constantly put, he just buys new and then. If you've okay. got the resource, why not, right? right? I, I like this one, Casey, and you'll identify with this, I think. It says, uh, I created a keyboard shortcut instead of actually learning how to correctly spell definitely. Uh-huh. <laughs> and now I just type in X, D, E, F, and it spells the word. Oh, that's really funny. I've always spelled it wrong, and autocorrect and spell check never fixed it, and I got tired of Googling it every time I needed the word. So they created a shortcut. That's you know what's funny, is, that, and people forget this, is that wherever you're, if you're writing at home, you are, you are, you can either, you can ask the computer if you have Alexa. You can just how do you spell? Yeah, and people totally forget that that option is right there all the time. I I have a few shortcuts that I use on the daily, and you use, it, it's like the addresses of you know like my address, the address here, um, phone numbers, email addresses. I've, I've created just because. It's not lazy. Uh, I just get so frustrated with typing on my Wait, phone. Wait, what do you mean? So what do you do? I, I have a like um like my home address. If I just type in my house number, my home address just comes up. Or the address for here. If he's talking to a guest that uh -huh. needs to, to come and visit us, he'll just he's got a, a little. Two, I just type in one bala and then you, the and the street rest address of it fills up. Yeah. But you created that, or yeah. it automatically yeah. comes up. No, no, I created that. Oh. You can yeah. create shortcuts. Yeah, if, if there's a couple of words, Casey will show you. If there's yeah. a couple of words or addresses or phrases oh. that you use regularly, you can create shortcuts. Yeah, I yeah. Do that. my shortcut. Yeah. Like if somebody needs my email address, if I just type in at at at, my email address comes right up. Right. That way, I, I just I can't, I can't stand. Hey, you don't like to do it. It's hard. Well, yeah, I'm just bad at it. All right, here's another one, another example. These are uh, things that people have done um, to avoid minor inconveniences. Uh, this says, uh, I went downtown today and I walked a mile and a half to avoid having to parallel park. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they're not good at it or they don't yeah. like doing it or for whatever yeah. reason. I like this one too. My cousin eats full meals. On paper towels to avoid doing the dishes. Oh I gosh. can see that. Yeah. I've seen him eat things like ice cream yeah. and spaghetti. Yeah. Yeah. Off of paper, oh, paper towels. Yeah, yeah that's tough. Also, also, paper plates, that's a viable alternative if you're tired of doing dishes. Yeah. I'll yeah. do the paper. I will do the paper plates, but yeah. not the napkins. Let me ask you about paper plates. When you when you decide to buck up and you get the plastic ones, uh -huh. the, the pla plastic paper plates, you know what I mean? Wax oh. paper plates. Yeah. No, yeah. no, not wax. No, like, like they're they're hard plastic. Hard plastic. They're plastic. Do you wash them and reuse them or do no. you throw them away? Oh, it depends. My. Both, Because actually, I yeah. usually throw them away and uh, uh, my buddy Steve and his wife were over and they were just like, <gasps> <gasps> what are you really? doing? And I know, I'm like, I know, I know, yeah. I should. So and, what, who brought in food yesterday? Uh, who did bring? Oh, um, I, it I was forgot Embers. Uh, yeah, a couple okay. days Embers. Ago. They yes. had really nice plastic plates. Yeah, so I, like that. I you, saved the, this one. Yeah. These are a little bit more, so if you take like the, the, the more. I got um, one here. Yeah. You know what happens? I think you'll throw them away, but you, uh, for me, I feel a little guilty. Because me too. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it too. We should reuse yeah, 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 these. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But they're disposable. Yes. And you bought it, but then we don't recycle them. And do you know how far away the sink is? Yeah. I'll use this one one or two more times, but I will. I'll wash it and then reuse it. Okay. Um, but yeah, at some point, even I will be like, "All right, we can probably toss this." <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, Steve. It's a, it's a little conflict I have too. Uh, hey, oh well, yeah. It's yeah. just part of the deal. You feel like, oh, man. Uh, I'm so wasteful. But you're you're a wealthy businessman. You don't have time for that. Okay. Let me go. Here you mm -hmm. go. This Here's is a winner for you. Paul. I'm gonna go to Peter. Hi, Peter. Good morning. Good morning, Queen. All right, hey, all right, Peter. What uh, what do you avoid? What what's the thing you do to avoid a minor inconvenience? I keep a hospital pee, pee uh, whatever a it is, a receptacle. Yep, next to my couch and next to my bed. No. Do you live alone? No. Oh my God! So you use one of those pee containers that you'll find That's in a hospital. So will the family be sitting there playing Jenga while you're taking a whiz on the couch? She has no idea. It's only when she's not home. <laughs> all right, so it's, it's for, for a long time. All right, Peter, yeah. uh, how <laughs> how many uses of this will you go before you empty it out? And usually to the number six. Six. It goes to number 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 ten, dude. No, how, no, how, not, much, not, how many fluid not, ounces? Not six times. What like it's, yeah. it's like once a once a week. I'll empty of them. All right, oh. all right. So let me ask you. Really like let it sit around for a week. I know you you hide it. 
Yeah, right, right where under, right behind the. Uh, all right, I, yeah, I, all right, I have a couple of questions. All right, a, how old yeah. are you? B, uh, is there any sort of ambulatory issue that you have? Well, I'm thirty-five. But, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, well, that'll do, but do you have do you have any issues getting around? I have a bum knee, but it's just annoying. How close is the closest? No, he can get up and how, go to the bathroom. Is what he's saying. I know. How close is the closest bathroom? Do you have a bathroom on the floor where the couch is? No. Oh well. Oh, okay. Yeah, then, I think you guys yeah. are in yeah. now. Yeah. No, you can then, take the stairs. Let's the man yeah. out. Come on, we, we're just we're trying to work with him here, Caddy. Well, it totally Do you fits. know how far? <laughs> it, it fits. Stairs? It fits the bill of serious laziness to yeah. avoid doing something. So, yeah. like, so I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's at least he's using a medical grade device. He could <laughs> right. be using an egg, a, a right. milk bottle. jug. <laughs> Gatorade Dude, bottle. You know, yeah. I'm not going to say who it is, but there's somebody that works in our offices here uh, who will, uh, rather than go to the bathroom, he'll, he'll pee off of his front porch. Front porch? <laughs> yeah. I oh, think, at home. I think, yeah, at not home. here at the radio yeah, Not here. No, oh, there's no porches I, here. I'm cooking in the kitchen. I'll just go out back of my porch and go on my porch. Okay. All right. All right. Interesting, Peter. You're a brave man for sharing. We appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> that must be one happy life. I will. Uh, I use the backyard if I'm outside and it's summertime and it's evening and I'm having a drink or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, I'll pee out there. Do you ever go into your neighbor's backyard? No. Okay. I do not do that. Um, but, wow, a week before he empties it out, and that's a bit much. So how yeah, much it would, would much. six notches in the in that container, what would um, that equate to in fluid ounces? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. So I, I don't know. I, I wish I knew per number how many ounces you know, most people, that meant. Most people draw the line. They'll do the pee, but they won't take a dump into like a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Although I saw I saw a, a bit the other day where it was an English uh, comedy bit, and they're all in the... Uh, they're taking a road trip, and he's like, I got to pee, and they're like, uh, or I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, use a bottle, use a bottle. And he's like, oh, man, no, I've done this as a kid. Oh, I go, use a bottle. I got a bottle right here. And he pulls his pants down and starts to take a crap in the bottle. <laughs> it is hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, let's see. I will, uh, yeah, let me go to, hang on, Meg. Hi, Meg. Good morning. Good morning. Good, what's happened to Meg? Um, this is a lazy kid thing. I was still at work, and my daughter texted me from home and said, when you get in, can you bring up a bowl of ice cream to my bedroom? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's a, I can see that. I mean, come on. You know, it's wait until right somebody there. gets home. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it's right there. But, yeah. will, you, will, will you text people? Uh, Thanks, Do you guys text, you know, other people in the house? Can you bring me this? Oh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. I uh, yeah. texted my daughter the other day. Uh, I just said, uh, there's the laundry basket at the bottom of the steps. <laughs> she was upstairs. I was downstairs. Right. I had taken the laundry basket from the laundry room. I put them next to the steps, and then I went back to my spot on the couch, and I texted my daughter and said, bring this up to your mother. Do you have two? So do you have um, Alexas around the house? Do you have... Uh, yeah, but we don't use them. Okay, because I mean, there's a feature yeah. where you can drop, drop in. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. I use it. We have an intercom, so yeah, yeah. I use that every now and then. For we sexing. know you do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's an infamous story. Uh, let me go to Troy next. Hey, Troy, morning. Hey, bitches. Hey, hey what? what? What's up, Troy? Boner alert. <laughs> Boner, Boner alert. alert. All right. All right, what's up, dude? Um, I, I hate filling out stuff on, like, like, when you go to order something or yeah. you want to get some information or you want to join something, you always got to fill out, like, four pages of crap online. Yep. I pay my girlfriend 25 to 50 bucks to do it. 50 bucks? You pay your girlfriend well, 50, 50 bucks is for like something like yesterday. Um, <laughs> we have to fill out this shared care share thing for get our insurance cheaper. Okay. Right. So I'm like, man, no, it's going to take like an hour for me to do it. She can do it in like 10 minutes. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I'll give you 50 bucks. And she get. Uh, I'll do it if you sell me 50 bucks because she knows I'm not going to give her cash. So <laughs> I've got to sell it or she won't do it. All right. That is, that's pretty lazy. That is. That's, that's pretty lazy. lazy. That's yeah. Lazy, no, Troy, you, yeah, yeah. You, that's, it's but, lazy, Troy. but it's commerce, too. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Troy. Appreciate Troy that. Troy also man. knows. Like, he know, you know, uh, no No thyself. limitation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to yeah. take you an hour and her 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's worth 50 bucks. would be a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the drop, yeah. please, if you would. That would be a waste of time. All right, let me go to Colin. Good morning, Colin. Espanol is Spanish for Spanish. Wow. Yes. Casey's old tune. I love it. All right, so what do you do? What uh, What do you do to avoid a uh, minor inconvenience? 
Yeah, our bathroom's on the second floor, so if I got to take a leak, I'll just go in the kitchen and turn the water on in the sink and get on my tippy toes. I don't hate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's better than going up the stairs. The yeah. Honestly, <laughs> you put stuff in the sink anyway that's rotting or whatever, yeah. to get, you know. It and all goes to the, it same goes the same place. I hear you, man. It's just not when my wife's home. Uh, it's probably a good idea. Of course, we know I have a history of doing that at Tim Graham's house. Right, yeah, right. but that's Twice. fine. It's not your house. Uh, that's right. It's fine. Yeah. It's not my <laughs> house. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate I'll it. I'll tell you, one of the best things in the world, though, is our, our last house in Maniunk, the bathroom is upstairs. Yeah. Uh, having a, a bathroom on your main floor mm. is wonderful. We, we re- oh, yeah. We uh, refinished our basement a couple of years ago, Steve, and we chose not to put a, a bathroom down there because it's expensive. Yeah. If you want to put a bathroom in the basement, it adds a lot to the cost. And... There are many times, especially after a few cocktails, where I'm like, why the hell did we put a bathroom in the basement? You should have invested in medical pee bottles. Yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah, yes, yeah. I could have just kept those down there. Uh, here is a, uh, here's another one. Uh, and this is to avoid awkward situations. This says, I said goodbye to a friend, and she started to walk the direction that I desperately needed oh, to go. Oh, she went yeah. the other way? So I took the entire <laughs> different loop from campus a good mile away just to avoid the awkward. I'm having to... Uh-huh. Continue to walk. That makes and, uh, sense. Yeah. <laughs> when you do that, when you are in that process of you've said goodbye or you've just had sort of pleasantries and you are then walking along in conjunction with someone else, it is yeah. so awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Walk really fast. Do we restart the conversation yeah. again? There's a scene in When Harry Met Sally yeah, where yeah, that yeah, happens yeah. and he's just like, I'll just stop walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a guy, a homeless gentleman, uh, was a couple of years ago in Philadelphia, he, he, hey, can I have $5? I need to uh, hop on the bus to get back to my... He was yeah. living in some community living. And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, fine. So here's five bucks. And then, like, <laughs> I go do my business, and, I, and I'm and i done, and I come back it's probably about a half an hour later, and I see him again, and I'm like... <laughs> He didn't avoid me. I was like, you're not, you're supposed to be on a bus right now. By the way, I just got a text from Tim Graham. He said, you suck. It will never die. <laughs> he had to sell that house. Uh, yeah, he did. He burned it down. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if they use that as a selling point. <laughs> yeah, well, or not. Guess who Lo- pissed here? Local celebrity once yeah. pissed in this sink. Here's another one. And Casey, I know you had mentioned this before, and this might be worth opening up for another discussion another time. This person says, My cousins go to an orthodontist uh, about 50 miles away yeah. to save about $50 a visit, but they go every mm. few weeks, and their entire family misses days of school over this. But we had thought about, uh, you know, talking about people who drive way out of the way for a specific service a service or, of some yeah. sort yeah. yeah yeah along those lines i knew a family that had five kids and they took all five kids to mexico for orthodontia because it saved them uh, ultimately i don't know ten thousand dollars or whatever so they, Nick, they left the country my favorite tug joint is in tijuana sure oh, yeah. yeah is that the donkey and one? i will go yeah the donkey show is matinee on saturday gotcha uh, here's another one that says, my good Johnny friend... Johnny Ola showed me that part. <laughs> my good friend once drove 35 minutes away to get gas. It was 12 cents cheaper. I know people who drive... <laughs> who burn up the yeah. gas to go drive and get cheap gas. I used to do that. I, I had my, like, cheap gas spots. And uh, when I lived out in Bucks County, it was on my way to, like, everything. Well, then when I moved, it was not. And I was driving out of my way. And one time I, like, sat down and really thought about it and figured out that I was probably spending more money gas Getting there, so yeah. Well, you, forget you, it. You got so I go. I'm like you, Preston. I do it. And this is a slightly different conversation, but I, I I gas up the car once a week. I have my favorite gas station. It fits into my weekend routine, and that's where I go. And I just it's my it's my place. All right, here's one. It's in here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I'll so I'll paraphrase. But this guy said that he knew someone who. I don't know what colored mulch he had in his flower beds, but oh, when no. his dog would crap in it. Rather than clean it up, he bought a spray paint that was the same color <laughs> as the mulch. Come on. Oh. And he would go over and spray it so that it would blend no. in. Yeah. I, mean, come I almost on. would allow the pee bottle before that. <laughs> oh, awesome. I do have a question about the um dog poop in your in your yard. Like it's not manure. Like it, it yeah. But no. no, I know that. No. I know that. But but with rain and all that, when if it goes away eventually. Yes. So you know here, what I mean? It like, will degrade. Yeah. So I have my like. For, so we we have uh, adopted the you know this um, this beautiful the Newfie, Newfie um, you know senior dog and and she takes big 80, 90 pound dog dumps. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so you you know and I'm, well, our, our collecting game is on high. So make sure we remove it. But um, the the guy I have a sprinkler system and the guy suggested running it a second time because of the acidic nature of the urine. Oh. 
uh, you know, like like so uh, the oh. schedule run a, just a brief period. And then Natural Lawn, my lawn care company, yeah. uh, they're, they're going to suggest ways to counter, because it's not fertilizer. A lot of people think, well, if I just sort of yeah. work it, it's not. Yeah. It, it, no, it's a wholly it's other funny, game. I don't but you don't know up. how to... He's going to do that yet. Uh, yeah. My session is coming up this weekend okay. where he's going to explain how to, you know, sort of it, listen, you're, you're going to get what you're, you're going to get yellow spots and you're going to get those that, as, as part of the deal. Yeah. But they can they can mitigate it a bit. But yeah. I know a lot of people think that. Well, what's the difference? It's fertilizer. No, it's not. No, I don't think of it as fertilizer. But I also like at, at my primary home. Uh, I, I don't clean it. We don't clean it up at all. The manor. Because nobody is in the yard. You know, like, like you cut I, your like, own the, grass. I, yeah, but okay. I, I so I cut my own grass. I'm not uh, the kids don't play in the yard, so I'm not worried about anybody stepping in it or anything thing along those lines. And then the uh, the shoes that I use to cut the lawn, they don't make it out of the garage. Right, anyway. right. Your dogs so, are huge. Yeah. Man. Well, Fozzie, he's got little rabbit turds. I only recently started cleaning up the dog poop in my yard. Yeah. It's terrible. Preston. But, I, but I've started doing it. It would be a yard of poop if I didn't do it. So, yeah. so we, like, every two days, uh, you know, I'll, I'll walk around. I mean, like, on patrol, like I'm on point. Uh-huh. And I'm, you know. You got a around. little grid system. I, I have my big, you know, poop bags, and, and I, I, do, I do it a good job. The trick also is to keep your lawn low, I think. Yeah. Because it, it's... It's messy. Hang on, I'm going to go to Anthony because he's got a, something he does to avoid a minor inconvenience. Anthony, good morning. Oh, man. Good morning, guys. Good morning to see you, Anthony. What's up? So what I used to do, I used to chew tobacco. And uh, to avoid getting up from playing my video games, I would spit in my parents' uh, plant <laughs> that was next to me. You a-hole. <laughs> God, that's awful. Oh, do, okay. Oh. You made me think of something. Oh, that's the best. You get a guy who leaves uh, piss bottles next to his couch and bed for, you know, three, four, five days at a time. But this guy gets to see the response from you, Nick, for spitting on a plant. I'm in tobacco spit in your parents' plant? It, it, yeah, come on. That is my disgusting. And did it do anything bad to the plant, Anthony? No, I just, I never even, it never even dawned on me. I figured it was just dirt. Yeah. My dad saw me and he was just like, what are you doing? Oh Wait, where's your spittoon? At least the urine went oh. into a medically con- contained device. Like it was bottled. <laughs> I love the things I get us. This is yours. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate so, it. All right. Let me fun. ask, let me ask you this. You run out of toilet paper. Have you ever had to, done? A, I just did a lazy thing the other day. I ran out of toilet paper in my bathroom. And I had my bidet, but yeah. I have to have my, you know, yeah. my drying thing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, all right. I do not. I reached into the garbage can. Oh. Where I, my, where I t- when I blow my nose, I will throw away the tissue. I don't want to work with you anymore. <laughs> and, and I said, listen. Uh, you, you'll take I looked, at, I looked at a piece of toilet paper and I said, you're about to get an upgrade. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're you're, you're, you're going to be a twofer now. Nick, you couldn't take the spit in the plant? How right. do you feel about this? Uh, well, I get Steve where he's coming from on this <laughs> one. Right? He was in a pinch. In a pinch. In a pinch. I, was, I had nowhere to go. And yeah. look, you're going to flush it, right? And it's it's, it's gonna going to be disposed of. I'm going to flush it. I'm not I saying actually, you. I sent it on a water ride. <laughs> That's right. You have more toilet paper in the house somewhere. I, but he was on the I toilet. I was already, my, my bum was messy. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You sent that toilet paper on an adventure. Yeah. You got to go down the drain. With, with his buddy. I got nowhere else to go. <laughs> 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 Beautiful. All right. Uh, we got a break here in just a second. Let me go to Joe. This thing that you did to avoid minor inconveniences. Joe, good morning, sir. Good morning, guys. I'm so lazy. I don't even care. <laughs> uh, blame me. All right. What's uh, your story? We, recently, we just bought a uh, electrical fireplace, put our dining or our living room. Uh, about a couple weeks later, we lost a remote. So instead of getting up the, uh, I don't know, eight, nine feet from the couch to the fireplace, I went out and bought those little folding, you know, yardsticks, those wooden yardsticks. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I jerry rigged two of them together and I keep it tucked behind the couch. Every time I want to turn my fireplace <laughs> on, I just sit there like a transformer. Uh, you reminded me that that's beautiful. a genius. Thanks, Joe. When we were kids, this is years ago, mm-hmm. we, um, my older brother had a, a TV in the room that we both wanted and when my bro- older brother left the house, my, both my, my brother and I got his room. We had the two beds and there was a TV, you know, press an old dial yeah. at the top of the set. So, because uh, we didn't want to get out and turn the TV on and off, I closed a wrench on 
on on the dial, uh. and I had a rope with a little like a uh, piece of wood on it at the end, and I would I would have it in my bed, turn mm -hmm. it on, yeah. and I'd throw it over to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and he said so he could turn it off by oh, pulling funny. it on that angle. You MacGyvered it. Yeah, yeah. You know? and by the way, we're like young teenagers yes. yeah. that lazy. Well, so uh, we have Roku's all over our house, yeah. and the remotes are really tiny, and they get lost all the time. I don't lose them. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at uh, not yeah. losing them, as a matter of fact. It's really not that hard. Uh, but they, uh, <laughs> they you have a remote on your phone the now, app, yeah. and so now that's what everybody defaults oh, to. Oh, all right, yeah. Speaking of the fireplace thing, we have a gas uh, fireplace, and where I sit to do prep work, and in the wintertime, I, I like to have the fire on, um, and it's just out of my arms, about a foot out of my reach from the yeah, couch. Yeah, yeah. So I always have my laptop with me. So I just I grab my laptop and I use it. Oh my god! Oh, it's light, yeah. and I just and I just yeah. flip the okay, switch right. with that. Yeah. So uh, when I'm <laughs> in bed at night, similar sort of thing. Uh, my, my, the pillow to the right of me is specifically used for me with my left hand to swing around and hit the door to close it, so I don't have to get out of bed uh -huh. to close the door manually. All right, and I just thought of another one for while sleeping. I like to have, uh, I get dry mouth overnight, so I always have some water right. on the nightstand next to me. Well, sometimes I'm not laying on my left side. I'm facing that nightstand. Sometimes I'm facing the other way. And I would like to have, I don't want to roll over. Oh, my God, yeah. I don't want to roll over to get something to drink. So I have now started taking a bottle of water and I shove it under the pillow. All right. Uh, off to my other side. So you have two? Bottles of water. Of water? One on okay. either side. You so should if I'm run. laying on my right side, I reach over to the pillow water. You should run a hose, two hoses out of the bottle. That'd be the best. Yeah, and just yeah. <laughs> like a gerbil. So some might argue that that's laziness or that could be, it could be construed as efficient. Convenient and, Convenient and, and, and efficient. Convenient and efficient, yes. Yeah, I agree. I'll go with that. Yes, yeah, you're I like efficient. that idea. All right. Anyhow, thank you very much uh, for sharing your stories. <laughs> very, very interesting uh, things that people have done to avoid minor inconveniences. All right, we do have to take a break. I have good news because our friends at Nebraza Brazilian Steakhouse yeah. have arrived. They're setting things up in our Acme Lounge right now. That means I can give away a $100 gift card. We'll take caller number 19 at 215-263-WMMR. Don't forget, Nebraza Brazilian Steakhouse has a brand new location in Center City. It's at 20th and JFK, and you can get the same incredible dining experience with more food selections and at a lower price than those uh, chain Brazilian steakhouses. Uh, Nabraza in Center City and Horsham, online at nabraza.com. So caller number 19, going to set you up. Coming back with the Bizarre File, so please stay with us. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, let's do Bizarre File Stories. No. Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. Brought to you by Liberty Saves of New Jersey, Route 73 in Mount Laurel, and now at 500 Horizon Center Boulevard in Hamilton Township. You can shop online at libertysafesnj.com. Well, speaking of safes, thieves stole as much as 30 million dollars in an Easter Sunday burglary at a Los Angeles money storage facility. 30 million? Yeah, one of the largest cash heists in the city's history, according to police. Uh, the burglary occurred Sunday night at an unnamed facility in uh, Silmar, an area of the San Fernando Valley, where cash from businesses across the region is handled and stored. The burglars were able to breach the building as well as the safe where the money was stored. Uh, the operators of the business, whom police did not identify, did not discover the massive theft until they opened the vault on Monday. They have to be thinking some level of inside job here, right? I think. Uh, the break-in was among the largest cash burglaries in Los Angeles history, and, the, to and uh, the total had surpassed any armored car heist in the city as well. Uh, the theft comes at nearly two years after as much as $100 million in jewels and other valuables were stolen from a bank's uh, from a, I'm sorry, Brinks Big Rig at a Southern California truck stop. You remember this? That? Yes, those, I absolutely do. Those thieves have never been caught. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. $100 million in jewels and other valuables, and that was nearly two years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. All right. If you know that you're going, uh, if you know what you're doing and you don't take any unnecessary risks, driving on the beach can be a blast. 
But as for one man, man in Kuwait found out recently, though, huh. if you're too reckless, things can go from fun to very bad in the blink of an eye. One minute, you're driving along in your Toyota FJ Cruiser. The next, you are flying through the air and praying that the landing doesn't hurt too badly. There's a video of this, and it's crazy. The driver's decision to not wear a seatbelt uh, quickly came back to bite him. It looks like the impact of the rolling vehicle. He, he's driving down the beach, and he, he tur makes a okay. sharp turn, and it rolls. It shattered the driver's side window, and it continued rolling. He ended up being whipped out of the car into the air. It's pretty wild footage. And yeah. did a couple of flips before he landed. And not only did he survive, but he was able to walk away from his fall with only minor injuries. Right. Uh, the car, however, did not fare as well. On top of rolling twice, it was apparently pulled out to sea by the time authorities arrived. Oh, no. uh, they were reportedly <laughs> able to recover the vehicle, but when you add the damage from the salt water and the damage from rolling twice, it's probably total. But eh. the video <laughs> is worth seeing. I mean, I actually, I thought it was doctored. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. Looked like it. it looks fake, no but it's real. NASA <laughs> is analyzing a two-pound object that crashed through a Florida man's roof to determine whether or not it actually came from the International Space Station. Awesome. Alejandro Otero said that the object crashed through the roof of his Naples home around 2.30 local time on March 8th, and the sound was recorded by his ring security camera. Uh, U.S. Space Command recorded the re-entry of a piece of debris from the International Space Station around the same time over the Gulf of Mexico with what the <laughs> trajectory uh, taking it towards southwest Florida. The debris was a cargo pallet of depleted batteries that had originally been intended to be returned to Earth in a control manner, but the failed Soyuz spacecraft launch led to an interruption in to the ISS schedule, and the pallet of batteries instead headed back to Earth in an uncontrolled reentry. Otero said that his son was at home at the time of the crash, but was not injured. The object was turned over to NASA to determine whether it originated from the ISS pallet of batteries. Well, that's the, oh, so that's actual equipment. I mean, my first assumption is something like, you know, frozen fecal matter or something like that. <laughs> no. Yeah. He said it used to have a cylindrical shape, and you can tell by the shape of the top that it traveled in this direction through the atmosphere. <laughs> Whatever you burned created in this burn and melted the metal over in this direction, he said, as he was looking at it. So pretty wild that they can pinpoint that they yeah, may have yeah. come. That is amazing. From the ISS. Wow. Get it autographed. All right. How about this? When a man was given a three-month suspended sentence after he admitted to urinating on the floor of a KM Malta Airlines flight last Sunday. Now that's lazy. And it was the first day of the airline's operation. <laughs> uh, the man uh, named Andreas Heinz from Germany uh, almost 50 years old, disobeyed cabin crew's orders to wait until it was safe to use the bathroom. Inspector Roxanne Tabone told the court that the man was on a flight from Berlin and asked to use the bathroom while the seatbelt sign was on. The crew informed him that he could not go to the bathroom while the seatbelt sign was on. He was asked to take a seat at the very back of the plane, closest to the toilet, and told that he could go in about five minutes, but the passenger decided to just pee on the carpeted floor of the aircraft. I'm so impatient. Hines was arrested as soon as he uh, the plane landed in Malta. He was later taken to the hospital where he was certified as being under the influence of alcohol. Oh. <laughs> he pleaded guilty and said that he regretted what had happened. Uh, the magistrate found that uh, he accu the accused guilty uh, by his own admission and sentenced him to a three-month jail term, suspended for uh, three years, by the way. That raises the question. So if you are uh, flying back from Dallas, um, uh, you know, a, a week ago plus... Um, this woman was on the flight. These, the um, seatbelt signs were engaged. We were having some turbulence. Yeah. And she asked the stewardess if she could get up and go to the bathroom. And the stewardess says, I can't legally stop you. Ah, okay. I, I didn't know nearly, that. Uh, but I, I, by advising you that you shouldn't, that would absolve the company of any injury you might uh, incur. Okay. I had never heard that before. No. I guess it's frowned upon. Yes. Uh, but I was wondering the same thing because uh, there was a woman on, on my flight and the seatbelt sign was on and um, I had to put my overhead. Uh, I was at a bulkhead, so I had an, uh, a little thing I wanted to keep under my seat, but you can't put it under your seat. Right. And I had left my headphones in there, so I'm stuck. Yeah. So she took it before the flight took off and, and they kept it in there like, we're having turbulence. We're going to keep the seatbelt sign on the whole time. I'm like, oh, yes, man. Son of a bitch. What do I do? But she got up for a moment. And so I'm like, well, I'm getting up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got my First, damn headphones. Yes. Pee in the aisle way. Yeah. But yeah. but I was curious about that too. About what if you really have to go to the bathroom? Right. You're not thought, supposed to get up. I thought it was you. You have to keep it fashion fastened when you're sitting. That it, not that you can't get up. 
I well, think they sometimes they don't want you to get up right. at all, especially and if they'll they're say disturbing. so. Yeah. So, well, interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyhow, that's mm-hmm. all we have in the bizarre mm-hmm. file. We have a guest who is on our Xfinity Mobile guest line. Talk about an event that is coming up this weekend. Let's go, Flyers! Oh my God! <laughs> Let's go, Flyers! I didn't know it was. Let's go, Flyers! It was that one. Let's go, Flyers! <laughs> Our former intern, uh, the situation. No, but there's a, there's an event that is coming up. It is uh, the second annual Brian Prop Celebrity Face Off Classic, and we have our friend Mr. Brian Prop hey! joining us this morning. Good morning. Proper. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Awesome. How you doing, man? I'm doing really well. Just getting ready to set up for the hockey event that we have this weekend. Uh, it'll be uh, exciting. I've got uh, a couple of celebrities: uh, Riley Cote, Cristobal Olawa. Mark Howe, yeah. Chris Terrian, oh. Andre Faust, and of course, Terry Frazier and Lou, 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 Lou Nolan uh, yeah. participated. And what about you? You know, I mean, you're, you're, well, you're, yeah, you're nothing to laugh off. Be there too, some <laughs> hockey. Yes. Awesome. Playing a little hockey. Okay, so this event is, is going to be at Iceworks in Aston, right? Yes, it is. It, 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 it starts, uh, the registration's uh, at 1030 to, to 1, and the, the game is from 1 to 3. And then there's a dinner right after that, uh, and so like uh, and there's a, a lot of a lot of things going on with that. Uh, but you know, I, I want to thank my uh, big sponsors, Michael, the CEO of uh, Sun East Federal C- uh, Credit Union. Uh, he's a big sponsor for the jerseys, and Brian Hornan, uh, Exact Cyber Cyber Security, and Chris Safone from the HJ. Canon company uh, group, and of course me uh, with my uh, Gaffa cigars sponsor, <laughs> my wife Eileen, who has Prime IV uh, hydration and wellness in Mar- Marlton. Nice, and and uh, Brian, this is going to be benefiting the the Headstrong Foundation, correct? Yes, it is. It's it's my second one doing that, and uh, you know we'll, we'll probably raise about uh, seventy five hundred dollars for for the event, and uh, awesome. so it goes to to a good cause. Yeah. So I have to ask you, Brian, because I know you you're, you're obviously we know you do a ton of charity work, and you're a big fan of golf, and your that competitive nature has obviously you know uh, worked its way throughout your life. Here's a, a charity event. It's fun, and you're out there but do the old instincts kick in and <laughs> to how competitive will this get it'll get uh, competitive because uh the team that i picked uh, won last year but uh you know this year it's a different team and so we'll see what's going to happen but it's it's fun for the charity and, uh, and the guys that i picked like they're not they're, they're they're older guys and guys that i know uh so they, they, they know why they're, they're here uh, to to help the the charity but of course of course uh you know the goalies are uh, a couple of new goalies and uh they, they did a really good job last year but uh you know it all comes down to the goaltending yeah. Hey, Brian, how often do you pick up a stick and, and kind of, you know, hit the puck around? Is it only when you're doing this event? Yeah, well, we I was at the Flyers against Boston alumni game like yeah. a month ago. Like, uh, So I, I did that. Uh, but since I'm uh, um, living in Florida, it's uh, a little different. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't skate as much anymore. But, uh, you know, I, I always want to come back to New Jersey. I, I'll skate with the guys at Pensock and Skate Zoning with a group of guys that I know there. And, uh, so like, uh, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's fun for me. And, and I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I miss it, but, uh, it, it's nice. So when I get on the, on the ice again, now when we're adults, our, our, our feet don't change size a whole lot for, for a long time. Do you still use a pair of skates from back in your uh, professional days? Oh yes, yeah. The, they're they're like uh, I don't skate that much, but uh, yeah, you, you use this, the same skates uh, every every time. And uh, like, but I had uh, I lost I lost my stick, uh, but the only one I had. But I I, I got one from uh, the trainer, like uh, Settermeyer, that uh, gave me a new a new stick that I can. I'll, I'll try that one and see how that works. Brian, there was a really cool video I saw a little while back surfacing on uh, somewhere on Instagram, and it was you at a Flyers game, and there was a guy who was wearing your jersey, <laughs> and he didn't know that he was going to run into you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so like I was hosting the the outdoor game with uh, Vince uh, Relisi, like from the Philly Sports uh, yeah. uh, events, and so like... Uh, just on the way back uh, from the bus, we had uh, three buses, uh, you know, going there, and we were in uh, running, walking back, and I just saw that 
he was right there, and so I ran out to him, and I, of course, I had my Sharpie ready, and I, and he, he just said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, oh, okay, can I sign your jersey? I noticed that you don't have a signature on my jersey, and so, and the guy I filmed it, and uh, that was really, really kind of neat. That is it. cool. I that is it. cool. That's excellent. Uh, well, listen, uh, Brian, we're going to send people in the direction to get tickets. You can get all the information at Brian prop.com of course prop is spelled with two p's and uh it's uh tickets are on sale at the door for for 10 bucks uh 50 bucks for adults that are playing in the game and a dinner package uh 20 bucks for kids by the way and all the proceeds like brian said are going to go to the headstrong foundation so that is yeah. so, this uh, saturday if, if you want you can they can use my venmo which is a brian dash prop 26 if they want a Venmo. Okay. okay. All right. Excellent. That's an easy way to do it. Well, we'll make sure everybody is aware of it. And I'm, I'm happy that uh, the event went uh, well enough last year that you're doing it again. And, and hopefully this will be something that carries on for years and years. Yeah. And uh, the, the good luck to the Flyers. I know that they, they got some help, uh, the Devils, uh, that they lost. And, and so we're, we're keeping an eye on that every, every game. Absolutely. All right, Brian, thanks for checking in. Good luck with the event this weekend. Okay, thanks. All right, you got a Brian Prop, yeah. guys. The Guffaw. The nicest guy. And he's also got a uh, golf tournament uh, coming up as well. Or he had it. Uh, yeah, it's coming up uh, later on. So the, the Guffaw Cigar Golf Classic. And Brian's, uh, the, the fact that he came back after his stroke like he has. It's amazing. Is just it's awesome. amazing. We should have asked him about the, the brawl on ice, Preston. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Rangers and, uh, devils. and the Devils yeah. and bench. <laughs> clearing or, or just all players fighting as soon as they drop the as, puck. Yeah, I mean, the game hadn't even started yet. I, and yeah. we were talking about it before the show this morning. I've not seen anything like that in a really long time. Uh, and I got to admit, it's pretty cool. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we need to take a break. We're going to come back in just a moment. Don't forget a little bit later on, actress Allison Sweeney. Yeah. We'll be joining us. So we'll talk to her in a bit and a few other things. We'll return momentarily. Preston and Steve. Marissa. Metro traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. With all this rain and weather we've had, Steve having some gutter issues. No, no. Yes. There were issues that have been uh, in the, um, they've been uh, something that was pending. We knew it was around the corner a couple of years. Having the uh, all of the rain of my lifetime happen in four days, yeah. uh, you know, has exacerbated the issue. So we have a, an 1820 Victorian farmhouse. And it has around the the gutter system is a what they call Yankee gutter system. What's they fought, that? They fought for freedom. Oh, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. So so, uh, uh, but it is a, is a specific kind of of gutter. And uh, what happens is, Preston, after a while, uh, the the uh, they start to leak, and the water works its way down this uh, ridiculous amount of rain we've had, and gets in behind the paint on the side of the house and okay. so the, it has exacerbated that issue we knew we were looking at you know running down the clock before we were doing but and I, normally i wouldn't do something as self-serving as this but there is there is a specificity to this and uh, i'm trying to look for a, a service that works on yankee gutters because oh. it's, they're they're not as they're not they're more Are common yankee. in this area but they're not that common so they're kind of old technology the, yeah okay. and what, so what, you what, need people who somebody who can work on yankee gutters and can give me some uh, some some insight you know uh, basically we're looking to get the the, the yankee gutters redone because what? What what you can do when you have them is you know the, there's sort of a, a trim around the house that looks nice and you can preserve that and you don't have visible gutters hanging off the house. You want somebody to email you? Yes, Steve okay. at WMMR.com, if you don't mind. Steve okay. at WMMR.com. If you work or know someone who does work with Yankee gutters. Well, uh, if it makes you feel any better, Steve, you're not alone. I don't have Yankee gutters, but I have uh, terrible gutters. Yeah. And um, yesterday, just with the amount of rain that we've been having, I walked into the back door <laughs> of my house, and, and we have two doors to the house, front door and the back door. I almost always go in through the back door. And it was like Niagara yeah, Falls in the back yeah. of the house. There was just, and I don't know if it's the gutters needed to be cleaned or whatever, but I don't think you were alone in, in uh, this area. I'll over guarantee the last you. Place, it yeah. was bad, man. Yeah, but this, this isn't like the kind of thing where you can just detach it and then, you know, right, clean it. Right. This is, it's, it's built into the house. I don't think we've ever had uh, gutter advertisers on WMMR, but I do remember on, on oh. KYW hearing... Um, a company called Harry Helmet. Okay. Harry oh Helmet. My God, really? <laughs> Which didn't that always sound like a penis to it you? Did, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah. Missing an opportunity there. Harry Helmet. I mean, that's a 
great euphemism for it. There was a company that did a fence installation called Engorged Penis. Okay. And well, that's I, a little uh, more overt. I thought right. that was weird. Mm. Um, I, I mean, we had an advertiser called Delaware Valley Gutter Monkeys. Oh. What is they that? sent the monkeys up to when do the work. What was this? I don't remember. Yeah, this was uh, late 2023. Last year. Yeah, 2023. Ju- July of 2023. What I need are okay. Yankee gutter monkeys. Yeah. Yankee gutter um, monkeys. I was talking to uh, That's Trish. That's like rubber baby bumper, bumpers. <laughs> Bubby, Sorry. Buggy bumpers. I was talking to Trish in our sales department a couple weeks ago about this because she has those the gutter guards. Yes. Which, um, I, and she swears by them. A lot of people love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had a. Um, I feel like I heard one person say that they had uh, squirrels, basically, because it became a home for them. Right. You know, they were able to make their way uh, into the gutter. And then and they, they got, lived in there. And There's they also, lived in the gutter. Sure. Have, have yeah. you seen the device that that actually you, you activate it and just goes along and cleans out robotically? Yeah. Basically cleans out the gutters. Okay. I, I've heard that about the squirrels. I've also heard, though, and if you have an area that has a lot of tree coverage, if you have those gutter guards, it will certainly help. Uh, keep the stuff out of there. But they, yeah, oh. Nick, I had the same sort of, I felt like I was on the maid of the mist. Yeah, it was yeah. It's awful and, and such a giant pain in the ass. All right, well, we could sit here and yap, oh. just gab on about gutter, Talk gutter, blue gutters. streak. Yeah. Gutters up this and gutters up that. Wait, wouldn't it be awesome if they could train monkeys to go up and clean them out, though? It would be. You know? yeah. yeah. Monkey gutters. Monkey right. gutters. I want to do something now that's totally separate from gutters, and yeah. it's uh, the Just Saying Institute. Oh. Because I have a stack of information uh, research that's been done at the JSI. The Just Saying Institute, home of the Steve Morrison Toilet Paper Repurposing Center. <laughs> yeah. oh <my> God. <laughs> All right. Now this is uh, this is pretty historic. The first man to receive a genetically modified kidney transplant from a pig has been discharged from the hospital. Wee! This is a Wee! that's him. This is a huge step forward. Yeah, the 62-year-old was sent home on Wednesday, two weeks after the groundbreaking surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital, Mass. Bacon. Uh, General Mass. Uh, Mass General, I'm sorry. Uh, organ transplants from genetically modified pigs have failed in the past, but the success of this procedure so far has been hailed by scientists as a historic milestone in the field of transplantation. Could you imagine? So if they, if they get this, we obviously we have our, a, a dear friend of ours, uh, uh, John Dorenzi, yeah. is, is waiting, uh, all the people who are waiting. If, if this could be something that, uh, because it's my understanding that that uh, on on a basic genetic level, they're very, very similar, correct? I believe. Obviously, I they, they're, they're, they wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't. I think there's a lot that we share uh, with uh, uh, organ-wise with pigs. Um, the patient, Richard Rick Slayman, had been battling end-stage kidney disease and required an organ transplant. Uh, they had successfully transplanted a genetically edited pig kidney into his body, body over a four-hour-long surgery. And that was on the 16th of March. Uh, they said that his kidney is now functioning well, and he is no longer on dialysis. Wow. Side effect, though, flat nose where you can see in his, in his nostrils. Wow. In a statement, Mr. Slayman said uh, being able to leave the hospital and go home was one of the happiest moments of his life. That is amazing. In 2018, he had a human kidney transplant from a deceased donor. However, it began to fail last year. And doctors raised the idea of a pig kidney transplant. He said, I, not, I, I saw it not only as a way to help me, but a way to provide hope for thousands of people who need a transplant to survive. So the new pig kidney he received was modified by Cambridge-based pharmaceutical company eGenesis to remove harmful pig genes and add certain human genes to improve its compatibility with humans. So for the pr- procedure, the hospital said it drew from its history as being behind the world's first successful human organ transplant. I didn't know that. Uh, didn't know uh, that, no. That, uh, Mass General was uh, behind that. I'm pre-law. It was a kidney in 1954, as well as research it had conducted with eGenesis on xenotransplantation, which is interspecies organ transplants over the past five years or so. Um, so, so far, so good, man. If this guy <sighs> could get a run of even, you know, uh, I mean, a couple in, years, in, 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 a the past, in the past, it's only been very, very short amounts yeah. of time that that, yeah. that this has lasted. If this could last for a few years, that would be a game oh, changer. I, and I, I wonder if you have to go through the same level of compatibility with a human kidney. If this presents more latitude in general, obviously... Know. There's more options, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, they, I bet they still have to make sure you're not going to reject it. Right, yeah. right. But maybe there is a or way try. to to um, adapt the kidney, to engineer the kidney uh, that would make it more uh, um, readily acceptable by the human body. 
So uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. So that's uh, that is that's cool. Some really good news is there are thousands and thousands, over a hundred thousand people, I think that that are that need transplants right now. Yeah. Uh, so, but even if you could just do that, uh, even news. if this was just something that could buy them a little bit more time, yeah. to get a human kidney. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that too. Yeah. All right, so good news there. All right, what else we have here? This one will speak to Kathy. Ooh. A recent study has found that clutter in the home <laughs> can have an effect on your mental health. Oh, totally. Yeah. According to a survey of 2,000 homeowners with garages assessed how they mm-hmm. deal with clutter. Nearly one-third have said that it's difficult to keep their homes organized. Meanwhile, 82% consider themselves to be organized, but they do feel the mental weight of keeping their homes tidy. I completely hear this. I, uh, it, it drives me crazy, uh, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not, you know, Andromeda Strain Kathy, you know, like is that ultra clean, but I do like organization. I do like things in their place, and I hate like, um, you know, for example, when I get out of bed in the morning and I'm leaving, my cat will be in uh, on the blanket, and if I go to work and I haven't been able to put that blanket, blanket. on the bed properly, uh, I think about it all goddamn time. Oh, wow. That's yeah. The, that, yeah. 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 And so, but there's things like that. There, there, so Is that, the, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like, it's me, crazy, right? Well, yeah. I mean, for yeah. me, yeah, that, that's like, and that's like little. Like, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's like everything in my house has to be, and like, you know, we went through a renovation. So like, you know, there's still stuff in the garage, still yeah. stuff in the basement, still, you know, I have stuff of Jace's Ugh. like in boxes. I need to, to get to it. But there's, I swear, it's like a certain time in the month and not that time. Not that time. time. But there's not, a certain time. In the not month your where, aunt Flo. No, but, I, and it might be like leading up to or after, or I, I don't know. I don't know the exact time where I will like rage organize and clean and straighten and throw things out and, right. and I, I'm just at the point I'll get to the point where I'm just taking things I'm like I could probably use this nope I don't know I'm not sure I'm throwing out it out of here yeah wow. no that's what I do yeah. and I, I wish I had I that. just rage organize and clean I cleaned my garage out last week um but I, I wasn't fully prepared I need to actually I need a, I need a bagster but I, I you know I Preston, I and because I know you do this too, I took everything out. Yeah, right. Of the garage, I do it. Uh, yep. I was able to like toss some things, consolidate, blah blah blah, um, and and then I, I put it all back in the garage. You know what I mean? So there's still clutter, but well, it's like you more, you reduce and you organize you, clutter. You, you, you take the win and you can organize organize it. And then here's something I always do. Once I've done that in the garage, this is a specific example. So the rest of the day and the following days, I will, for no reason, just go out and look at it. Sure. Oh, I've done it. Like, uh, I still look, do it. Look at that. Satisfaction. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I want to say this delicately. Um, are any of you guys engaged to an artist who has ADD? <laughs> 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 no, but a uh, guy I work with is. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I, know, I think I know that guy, too. And yeah. uh, he tells me that from time to time, he'll wander up into her studio, which is in a converted attic, and sometimes... It really makes him uh, feel very anxious <laughs> and, and, and deal with anxiety. And look, it, it's her space, right? So yeah. when I'm up there, uh, I, I try to remember that that's not my space. That's her <laughs> space. Exactly. But Steve, like the way that you think about anything with a cat blanket or whatever, yeah, like, yeah. that's how I am. And it's I, it, look, she, I, she's what, my what partner. What causes that? I don't know. Yeah. And, and um, I tried not to judge or uh, you know, it's it, whatever. It's her space, and she can do whatever the hell she wants there. Yeah. But I, I would not be able to live with that. That stuff in my space. Yeah, same with Rochelle. We have a, we have an office room, and uh, that used to be mine. Uh, it's not anymore. Uh, and so Rochelle took that over because she runs the the, opera- household. the operation of our family, all of it, and that includes taxes, insurance, all all the things that need to be taken care of. It is a god awful hoarder <laughs> mess, but she gets everything done that needs to be done. It's her uh, to, to run. Our yeah. corporation, <laughs> and so I can't <clears throat> say anything so, about it, but it drives me up the goddamn yeah. wall. So they, I set up an office in, in the second floor for uh, for Claire to do that. She's more comfortable doing it down on the dining room table. She runs everything. So so and does it flawlessly. Does a, a fantastic job. So while I I'm that and you, God bless you because she puts up with a ton of my stuff. But what I'll occasionally do is I will go over and I will square off pages on, and and you know I'll say I'll just push this a little bit, just a little bit. and stack it a little bit, yeah. and she'll look at me like you're you're out of your friggin' mind. Yeah. So Preston, you and your wife in the relationship that's the, it was the opposite for my parents. My mom was the one who craved neatness and and tidiness, and my dad ran the office and and 
Uh, so my mom would wait for my dad not to be there and would literally just go in and throw stuff away. Mm. And, I was, and you know, and then he, he'd get furious about it. But like she was like, this is a gas receipt from 1987. We don't need it anymore. It just so I do. I do this. The uh, the vacation week that we had normally I had other family things I had to do. But that for me is a big spring cleaning. I, I need to reset every couple of months. Yeah. I need to reset that stuff just to get. Just to get stuff out to clear it. The Baxter's a wonderful option. Uh, yeah, case. I'm, I'm, I, really? I definitely need that because I just have a lot of junk and like toys that the kids <laughs> they they don't use anymore. You know what I mean? And and uh, how many of those kids do you need? Well, <laughs> I, I, but then I look at these these toys like you know like those those little tykes things. I, I yeah. have a couple of those and I'm like, you still well, have those? Yeah, we don't need them anymore. Can I? Have uh, well. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to throw them away. Are they good enough for like a yard sale? You know, I, you know. So you're kind of tasked with with all of that stuff. But I will say, even suck. throughout all of that clutter, like I still know where little things are, and yeah. that and that brings me joy. So uh, my son plays rugby, and and he and I were gonna have a rugby catch, and so I grabbed the ball, and it needed air in it. So I go grab the pump, and there's no needle for it. And, I, and dude, I was so proud of myself <laughs> because I go. I remember at one point seeing a needle in this wicker basket on a on a, a shelf somewhere, and I go and I check this wicker basket, and sure enough, one lone needle sitting in there. I press. That was a major totally. victory. I'd like totally. To, I'd like to take this time to thank my <laughs> wife and my no, beautiful I know, family. I, I know, and I, I <laughs> I've taught myself to just I pick a place for something. And that's where it will always be. Yep. And that that is it. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Mm -hmm. I've lightened up a little bit, but Nick, I used to throw your stuff out. I know. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Kathy <laughs> would have specifically worked days we weren't working so she could blow apart. You know Steve, stuff out. Yeah. If your stuff keeps creeping over, uh, oh, you're going to see. She's not like Godzilla. You're going to see Godzilla, like Godzilla in the trash. I know, yeah, I know she was like Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in, the, in the long run, Kath, like the stuff that you threw away, I have no idea what it was. No, well, and, and, so, the, and it's fine. And there was one hall. Uh, where Robin and I cleaned the entire studio and we like That's made right. it pristine. Now I didn't throw out uh, your stuff because I wasn't sure with, with some of it. I put it in boxes, but none of you ever went to those boxes to find anything. So you yeah. didn't need it. So now I'm going to well, throw those boxes out. There's your proof. <laughs> if, if, it's, if, you, if it was needed, it would be used. Right, yeah. right. Steve, you said that, uh, you know, certain things always go in certain places and yeah. I try to employ that in my house. Uh, and my children, are the, they're the wild card. So right. I do have a question for you. Uh, do you have a spot for your batteries and yes. a spot for your light bulbs? I have, and I would recommend it heartily to anyone. I have a battery caddy, oh, which is a like a case. I've seen that. Those, has, yeah. Yes, and I got it as uh, as seen on TV, and I was mocked. I was laughed. I was pointed at as I walked through town, <laughs> and yet now. Whenever we have an issue, it's always the battery caddy, and it, it works like gangbusters. The garage, the closet, and the drawers are reported the most difficult places to keep organized, and it's good for your mental health if you keep organized. All right, moving on. Another study that was done. According to this particular one, couples who drink together live longer and have happier marriages. <laughs> This is uh, research from the medical journal, The uh, Gerontologist. They examined drinking behaviors and the impact that it had on mortality among opposite sex spouses. You know what? I love the way you've arranged your art studio. Based <laughs> on a study conducted by researchers at the University of Michigan, where 4,656 married and cohabitating different sex couples over 50 from 1996 to 2016, spouses uh, concordant or similar drinking behaviors often report better quality marriages and are married longer compared with those who report discordant drinking behaviors. I've seen some couples that drink together where it doesn't seem to be going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they mean binge drinking yeah, together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are an a-hole. Analyses revealed concordant drinking spouses both indicate... I'm they, sorry, I couldn't hear you over your impotence. ...that they drank in the last three months. Yeah. That's not drinking. No. <laughs> She's drinking once every three months. That's, That's not, not drinking. drinking. <laughs> nice try. Uh, they survived. <laughs> they survived longer than discordant uh, drinking spouses, which means one partner drinks and the other one doesn't. Not and concordant 
non-drinking spouses. So the drinkers live longer together and are happier, according to this particular study. Any data on uh, those who indulge in marijuana? No, this was just done on booze. Okay. But I'll, I'll keep an eye out what for data. What about heroin? Like that. Rochelle had quit drinking for years. Uh, and just about a little over a year ago. She was tired of watching you have fun. <laughs> she dove back into it. No, she was on vacation in Italy with her oh. aunt. Oh, they go. have and wine her there aunt, right here. Yeah, 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 and her aunt talked her into, come on, just have a glass of wine. And then that was Here, it. try it. Now, now we have, now, Kathy, we joined a food, a, a wine, <laughs> a wine club. service, a wine club. <laughs> no. She went from nothing yeah. to having it delivered uh, every week. And my, our best friends were like, you're back? You're back! <laughs> oh, my God! Uh, is this yeah, like the party so, end? Uh, yeah. You yeah, try these. Is. They're called yellow jackets. Yeah, so uh, they were so happy when they found out the shell's back on it. She's so, free! Yeah. yeah. But it is kind of fun, and now wine is a, like a little enjoyable oh, thing that we have now. So anyhow, I thought that was an interesting study. All right, uh, do we have time for one more? Uh, yeah, I, I guess it's not until 9.10, so. All right. A trial in Britain will give weight loss shots to kids between 6 and 17 years old. Uh, the global study will involve 200 children who are obese and have one weight-related health issue like uh, diabetes or high blood pressure. Kids who participate in the study will also be asked to be part of a dieting and exercise regime. Some children will receive a placebo, uh -huh. and others will receive uh, semaglutide, uh, uh, the active ingredient in things like Ozempic and Wagovi. Now, will the ones who receive the placebos be told that they're receiving placebos? No, that will oh, go against the, the point. point. <laughs> Of doing it. So, here, this is pretend Ozempic. A uh, representative for the company said uh, Novo Nordisk is uh, focused on providing further innovation and understanding of childhood obesity uh, through research and, de and development, but also through long term partnerships uh, with the obesity community. So, they're trying this out, which is great if it ends up being yeah. working out for kids who have obese. You yeah, know, physical inherent physical problems with weight on Oprah's, and it um, can fix. And and I'm sorry to interrupt, Steve, no. but now they're seeing that that it, it, Ozempic and, and maybe some of these other uh, semaglutide um, drugs might help with things like Parkinson's disease. If this turns out to be mm. like this catch-all, awesome it could, thing, so how it's, great it's like would that what be? Uh, Viagra turned out to yeah. be uh, multiple things, and it, and it gives you a boner. Yeah, no, hopefully but it doesn't turn into I Am Legend. Well, know? that's right. what I was wondering, yeah, yeah, yeah. too. Because you always have to be aware of that, too, because uh -huh. these things need to be tested over a, a long yeah. period of time. Yeah. On the two-hour Oprah Ozempic commercial, basically, is what it was, she did have a mother and a daughter who was, who just was gen genetically predisposed to being, she was like 300 pounds in, yeah. in third grade. Right. A crazy thing. Yeah. So, so um, she, she was, if you weigh on the balance of, of the options... Her diabetes went away. Mm. She she got yeah. her weight down, and so you know whatever side effects she's dealing with, it, they made the decision it's worth dealing with rather than having that. Yeah. So yeah, no, I it, whatever they can do, you know, and if it's going to make if they can lower the price better, though, because I don't I know. know if I heard it. Go in to here. Costco. No, but if I heard, I I, I don't know if yeah. I heard it here or whatever. But apparently, like they make Ozempic for like basically it's like five bucks. Yep. And now it's like a thousand bucks a month or something like that. And listen, I understand you're a corporation, you're a company. <laughs> Um, you know, my brother was yeah. uh, it was in a research farm farmer for a long, long time. So I know that the the time and effort that and money that goes into all of the research. But at a certain point, you know, like, it's cost it, prohibitive. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Costco. Story came out yesterday. Uh, the Warehouse Club and Healthcare Marketplace Sesame are now teaming to offer access to a weight loss program. That includes clinically approved access to GLP-1s, which are the drugs yeah. like Ozempic. Uh, as of April 2nd, Costco members can sign up for the service, which runs $179 for three months. It includes consultations with a clinician and a medically uh, appropriate treatment program, which can include medications. And the development comes nearly six months after Sesame announced partnership with Costco, offering members virtual primary care for $29 in all states. Now, I don't know the details of all of this. Yeah, my one story I heard suggested you could be getting lower rates on the those drugs, on the Ozempic yeah. type drugs. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Except I'm, they uh, come in huge hypodermics, Preston. But you've got the size to, of kayaks. Uh, it's got to be. <laughs> 
it's got to be approved by your insurance. Yes. Too. That's that's the thing. So, so insurance companies aren't net just saying, hey, yeah, sure, we'll pay for it. Yeah, uh, why not? So uh, you definitely have to be cl clinically proven to need uh, this stuff. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, that's it. That's all we have that's time it. for in the Just Saying Institute. we got to wrap the whole thing up. We'll do some other studies and uh, research and get back to you down the road. In the meantime, let's have dinner. Uh, our friends at Nebraza Brazilian Steakhouse arrived this morning and it was Saul, right? That was yeah. his name who stopped by yep. and gave us this amazing spread of food. And we have $100 gift cards for Nebraza mm -hmm. Brazilian Steakhouse. And you got to try the cheese bread. I will try. I'll do it. Call number 15 at 215-263-WMMR. The new location is at 20th and JFK Boulevard in Center City. Beautiful and spacious dining area in Nebraza. Now with two locations, the original in Horsham and the new one in Center City. So make your reservation online at nebraza.com, by the way. But we'll take that 15th caller. We'll give you a $100 gift card. When we get back, actress Allison Sweeney will be joining us. So stay with us. WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. Our next guest is uh, promoting her new Hallmark movie called One Bad Apple, a Hannah Swenson mystery, premiering tomorrow on Hallmark Mystery. Steve, do you remember the um, uh, the song by the Osmonds? One bad yeah, apple, don't spoil the, the whole bunch, baby. Marissa, can you see if you can find that before this interview is over? Oh, I haven't heard that song it's in a good song. ages. <laughs> and it just made me think of that. All right. Our guest is on, and we've just serenaded her yeah. <laughs> on our Xfinity mobile guest line. Please welcome the very lovely Allison Sweeney Yay! to the show. Hi, Allison. Get serenaded that often. That was lovely. Oh, you're a liar. Uh, do you do you remember that song though, Allison? Uh, no, to be honest, I had not heard that song. So I really hope you play it after this. Okay, all right, we'll have to get that. Okay, so you got to bring you up to speed. Steve here, my partner, is a little more in tune to the Hallmark universe. Yes, but this is this is kind of an offshoot of the Murder She Baked series. Your character, Hannah Swenson, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and this tell me, tell yeah. me who Hannah Swenson. Sell it to me. I, I want to know. I want to see this because I do like. Okay, let let I, me give you the uh, yeah. elevator pitch. You know. All right, yeah. cool. She's yeah. A baker in a small town in Minnesota, and she stumbles across a dead body and looks around and realizes people are kind of suspicious of her, and she had better figure out who. Uh, who did it, or they're going to blame her or her bakery for, the, you know, baked goods killing someone. Okay. Yes. And, and I, go ahead. thus begins a wonderful uh, series of movies in which Hannah stumbles across dead bodies and helps people <laughs> figure out who killed them. So here's why this works. Yes. And, I, I, and I dig this. I, I dig the Hallmark Mysteries uh, I, I And I, I love stuff like this because it sits right in that pocket that for me used to be occupied by, like, shows like Columbo. Uh, you know, n nothing... Yeah. Uh, listen, and I, I'm always up for for a, a brutal crime drama, but this sometimes you want a really Agatha Christie esque who done it, and that's what um, yes. that's what this is, and I love this. More Nancy Drew, a little more, you know, Angela Lansbury version, right? Or, or Andy, you know, what was his name? Andy Griffith. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Griffith, right. So, so, but, but to that point, though, it's not like this is all. It, it, this isn't, you know, the or the just like Christmas movie vibe. It, it, the you, you guys at Hallmark. No, no. It, it, I mean, there will be, as you said, there will be bodies, and that that happens as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it's engaging. And my favorite, the reason I like making them, they're my favorite to be a part of because of the action. There's a little bit of drama, a little bit of. Uh, scary, you know, things might happen, danger, and then I get to do, like, a fun little action sequence or a stunt at the end. Um, you know, so, like, for me, it's, like, so fun because, you know, it's just a little bit yeah. more... Exciting and, 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 and they're they're fun to watch and you know what you you know what you're going to get and and they and everyone wants to figure out uh, the, the classic who done it vibe. What I want to ask you is: this is your first turn at, at writing a script for one of these. You wrote it yourself, yeah. correct? Okay. And um and your your co-star Victor Webster, you've worked with him for for a, a long time. Um, was it was it weird? You know, like writing in his voice, or uh, did you take to it very easily? Yeah, I think actually, oddly, as an actor, because I had worked with this set of people, these characters, 
I could really hear them all in my head. I knew what the actors all sort of sound like in these characters. And so actually writing it for that was quite, um, you know, natural to me. Uh, the hardest part or the part I was expecting the most from myself is I really like, I'm really interested in true crime. I listen to, I watch Dateline every week. I, <laughs> I listen to a lot of podcasts about it. And I wanted the murder mystery to be interesting and surprising. And yet I wanted the clues to be good so that the audience, at the end when you find out who did it, you're like, oh, wow, yeah. And then you you know you could go back and find, figure out and see how it laid in there's there's uh, some there's that, that was really that's hard it's hard it's no but you you want to do it right Understood. There's something so compelling about about you know, true crime. I, I myself am a, am a huge fan, and obviously, you look at shows that, like Dateline or any of the the myriad of shows of the you know that the focus in on, on real crimes. Let me ask you: Are are you more a fan of the, the, the two schools of thought? Murder is revealed at the beginning, and you figure out how the sleuth will will figure that out, or you're led along and you have to figure it out yourself. For the traditional, you don't know, and you're whittling down the suspects with the, um, you know, yeah. along with the audience, and then you figure it out at the end. They reveal it at the end. Right, There's right. One show that I think did it well um, with uh, Bill, um, what's his name, that great actor, uh, and, and he uh, he had a good show where, like, they give you a way who did it right away, and you're sort of startled by it. And then you figure out why. Right. That's sort of interesting, but I wouldn't want that all the time. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. So, so uh, let me ask you: if you're if you're, right, you're doing the script writing, any any urge to direct? Um, I, I, you know, yes. The answer is yes. I do. Would love to tackle that sometime. But under the the budgets that we're on on these small shows, um, <laughs> you really couldn't do both. Okay. You have to find. An opportunity for a script I don't, I'm not starring in, and I can direct that. All right. And you've done yeah, this, you've too. you've done directing before, and you'll you'll know my uh, uh, my soap lingo because you did it on Days and GH back in the day. You did a couple of uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. ep episodes that's of those. Right. I, my sister and I used to watch uh, soap operas all the time when I was younger. So, uh, uh, so yeah. so you've got your hand in that. And once once you taste yeah. directing, I would imagine you want to keep going back to it. Yes, that's right. It's exactly right. You, you sort of get the bug for it, and you kind of want to uh, stay involved. And I would love to to do it, but it is a big job, and yeah. it's not like well, in the days too. I was not in those episodes that I directed. Oh, then there's the difference. Yeah, okay. directing yourself might be kind of uh, difficult. Right. I, I, I watch. I had my soap operas that I, I watched as well, and and I have to ask you a question. It's something I've always found fascinating about the pacing of a soap opera and and what it does to an actor or actress who's engaged in this. They they will they will have a reveal where yeah that's your my daughter and the two they're standing there looking at each other. They'll break away. Freeze. They'll be, yeah, freeze. There'll yeah. be like nine other pl plot points advance, and they'll <laughs> cut back to them. And then the reaction, which happens like 11, 12 minutes later, uh, uh, it, 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 and we're supposed to believe, what are we as the viewers supposed to believe? That they stood there all that time looking at each other <laughs> or that it's actually consolidated time? I think you're supposed to believe that this is all happening simultaneously. Okay, right. all right. right. You're getting, a, it's broken, um, it's that broken mirrors concept, right? Like, so that you're seeing all the different lives, ha or siding doors, is that the, that's yes, the, yes, yes, yes. You're seeing it all happening at the same time, mm -hmm. um, but, but no time passed for them. Okay. So, it, like, for us, we play it like it literally just happened. We okay. did not play 11 minutes of that. It's fun to think that you guys were just standing there and not <laughs> saying anything. The news was so it. devastating. I was right. wondering if something smells bad. Right, right. <laughs> hey, Allison, with with this uh, recurring character and uh, also with the, the way detective shows have played out, uh, in the past, and you mentioned a few like Murder, She Wrote, and so on. Do, does uh, does Hannah have a uh, a catchphrase or anything along those lines? A recurring um, movement of some type, or or is there is there a thing in the show that's? Oh, I don't. You're right. I should have a catchphrase. Yeah. yeah. I do more like 
our thing is that um, I'm still running a bakery mm-hmm. while I'm solving these mysteries. So for us, it's more, and, and this is based on a series of novels by Joanne Fluke. She has these like 30 novels based on this baker who solves mysteries. And each book is based on a dessert title. And so I try to, in the movie, we make that dessert and we do this like really pretty baking montage where she's like, you know, whipping up a chocolate cake or or rolling out a pie crust and then putting together this delicious tart or, you know, fancy dessert. And so we kind of do a little bit of food glamour shots. And, uh, I like that. You know, sort of in, so the audience can really sort of enjoy the delicious baked goods along the way. Have uh, you so become are, have you become made. desensitized to all of those delectable treats on the set, or do you no, <laughs> no. partake upon them? <laughs> so tempting! Like, oh sure. my gosh, they're so tempting every day. But the best news is you've been filming with them for five days, so as tempting as they were on day one. By day five, they're cardboard, and you better not eat them. Right. Yeah. Since you are baking in the show, I think a suitable phrase might be, say hello to my little pan. Say Whoa. hello to my little pan. <laughs> sort of a co-opting of Scarface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, yeah, well, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 coming. <laughs> <laughs> the movie premieres uh, tomorrow. It's on uh, Hallmark Mystery. Yes. Which is a whole other it's arm. Good, it's good stuff. Of the Hallmark universe. And uh, you guys do, uh, you have wonderful success with this. I've watched many of your uh, of your holiday ones. Yes. But I haven't, I haven't delved into the mystery. So thank you for pitching it to me, Alice. And I appreciate it. I will check them out. Good. Yeah. Thank right. you. Good luck with everything. One Bad Apple, a Hannah Swenson mystery tomorrow night. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Alice and Sweeney. Hey. Nice to talk to you. We'll see you later. I do like right. them because they're just, you, 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 you can just sit there. And I, you know what I do? What? I sit there and I just look at how pretty the girls are. <laughs> That's it. And she's one of yeah, them. Yeah. She has such a beautiful smile. Yeah. She's one of those just yeah. girl next door, beautiful. And the dude is like, and you know how I'm, I'm very critical. You got to have the dude match. Right. And the dude's good looking. Yeah. He, he would warrant an Alice and Sweeney, and that's when this stuff works. When they are mismatched, when the, when one is way better looking than the other, it just doesn't work. Mm-mm. So thank you to Allison for calling in on our Xfinity Mobile guest line, and uh, we appreciate that. All right, we have a little bit of time, right? Yeah. Oh buddy. yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. There was something. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm I'm going to mention this now. Uh, I saw this. It was results of a YouGov U.S. Sur- uh, survey, and it it delved into the percentage of Americans that think they could win in a barehanded fight against a variety of animals. Okay. In a barehanded a barehanded fight. Okay. Yes. Do they in fact include the bear? Yes. Okay. A grizzly bear. Yeah. Uh, if, to be honest, I, 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 <laughs> I've thought about this way too many times. Okay. Of course you have. Right. Listen, I know that a bear, a lion, a tiger would just maul me to death. But there is a just a sliver of a possibility if you do the right thing at the right time that perhaps maybe you could win. Like if you say, "Look over there," yeah. and sucker punch him. Yeah, yeah. No, but I don't. I don't think a sucker punch is going to work because if, their bone density yeah. is just so thick. If you happen to get a a lucky gouging of the eye or something like that, or a hand grenade, a yeah. soft target. So I think this is like a guy thing yeah. because I there's like if a chipmunk runs by me on the trail somewhere, I. Will, I will scream. No, I'll tell you, Something's tell you what. killing me. I've been terrified by a mouse in the house before. Yeah. I could, yeah. But I still think I got a crap good, out of a chipmunk. Yeah. A pretty good shot at some animal. Yeah. Toe to toe. I would pass, I would pass out. <laughs> I would not be, I wouldn't be able, they would just maul me because I wouldn't even be able to get within. Look, the book has a <laughs> Kathy Romano was mauled by a chipmunk. <laughs> well, yeah. I know. Complete pussy. <laughs> no, I don't mean the chipmunk. I mean, you guys are entertaining maybe a bear or some sort of larger animal. Right. I, I really think that if I was put in that situation, I would probably drop to the ground. Yeah, you, you, you would just you, cover yourself in salt and pepper and say, have at it. Well, right? Or you do the play dead thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, there is, I mean, it's, it would be one in a trillion shot so that you would best a grizzly bear. My one in a trillion shot for any animal like that would be to 
shove my fist down their throat and hopefully choke them to death well, from the inside. You're basically just feeding your arm you're, to the yeah, bear. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but if I what? take one yeah. bite, Here, I eat this first. Yeah. I, I have heard that if a dog attacks you and is biting, say your forearm, mm -hmm. and, and that your inclination is to pull yeah. away. You actually want to go the opposite of what you and think push. you're supposed to and push, push. in the dog? because oh. it will cause the dog to maybe Grr. open its maw. Hey! And, and go, oh, yeah. You made me throw up! <laughs> and you can get it to release. Yeah. Now, how effective that is, I don't well, really know. One thing you do know is that you're not going to assist in ripping your flesh off by yeah. tearing it away from his jaws. Right. Yeah. You guys have seen the footage of uh, there's a... I guess maybe they're fly fishermen, and there's a grizzly just charging right at them. Like, and that's like, it, oh, at and least they, they yell at, and they're like, Rah! And you, they're, you and, need <laughs> to appear bigger and threatening. Yeah, well, sometimes the thing turned, it works. Yeah, the thing turned or in this video that he's yeah. talking about, the thing turned around and ran. But I mean, uh, what well, else I would, you I would have Kathy, not stepped forward and screamed. Th there was footage on last week's America's Funniest Home Videos of cats. Chasing away bears. Uh -huh. yeah. So it, yeah, it you you catch the right thing. You you do that larger than life. You create that sound. You you um you know uh, yes you can. But if you're if you're we're talking about you are now okay that that's gone. You're yeah. engaged in a now fight. Now you're engaged. You're you're fighting a grizzly bear. You're dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. My cousin had uh, an encounter with a bear, and um, he it was it was dark out. He was in the woods, so he couldn't fully see <laughs> what was happening. But he believes the reason the thing didn't maul him was he had a, a water bottle that was like halfway full, and he said he just threw it as hard as as he could, and he he said he thinks he was lucky enough that it hit the bear in the nose, okay. and that's oh. what sent him off. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so according to this, uh, these are, uh, and we'll, we'll end with grizzly bear. Okay. But we're going to start with smaller animals. Chipmunk? Se no, a rat. Oh, a rat. So in, in the ballpark, 70% of uh, the people polled think that they have a, that they could take out a uh, uh, a rat. I forget what country. Uh, that were... means 30% think that they wouldn't last against a rat. Well, they were showing, uh, I forget where this country was, but um, they were showing their um, endemic rat, which is about the size of a small dog. Mm -hmm. mm. Dude, what, right. What's that torture where they put the helmet on the person and then the, the put rats? Uh, well, 1984? That 1984. Yeah. yeah. Winston had a, had a, a horrible fear of rats. That's a bad way to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's gnarly. Um, so a house cat. Um, Kathy can speak to this specifically. About sixty-eight yeah. percent say that they got a good shot at it, and these are these are going to no. go down. In uh, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Kathy had to tap out. Here's the deal: a house cat with with the claws and everything intact and ready to go can really hurt you pretty bad. But I think if it comes to a death match, yeah, it, you're going to you're going to take cat. out a cat. So the cat I, will die before you will. You can get hurt pretty bad, but I think you'll live. Kathy had the, her the cat had your arm behind your back and made you say uncle. No, <laughs> no but uh, well, I didn't want. I guess if you were going to go to death, yes, but I didn't want to kill my cat. And believe it or not, I didn't even want to hurt her. But she was hanging off of my flesh with her nails and her teeth <laughs> so on I, my leg. It, it, so the metric is <sighs> life or death. So in a life or death battle, you could kill a cat. You could you could win in a fight against I a mean, cat. I, I guess. I, I had know. my cat, Hubert, by the way. Um, my wife was getting knots out of his fur, and he just had a reaction like he wanted to, me to stop. And you forget sometimes, I mean, we have eight cats, how sharp their, their nails oh are. My God. And he just swiped out caught my lip oh the the, the hook of the nail went through one side of the yeah. lip and out the other yeah and um and he's, he's basically the weight of this heavy cat is hanging off my lip oh i heard a cat fact yesterday and steve you probably know this um but cats if you are in a real deep sleep uh sometimes that freaks cats out because the way that cats sleep together um, they often are all like in a, in a pile of cats, right? There's yeah. a whole bunch of them in the same place at the same time. So if they see you and they love you and you are out completely, it starts to weird them they out a little bit. And, and they still, they'll, they'll start talking to you and, and, you know, meowing louder and louder and louder. And uh, they, they look to disturb you and roust you because they're afraid you might be dead. So that could conceive... So I, my, the cats that sleep with me at night are uh, Lily and Hubert. But you're not a deep sleeper. And Oscar, but I'm not very deep. But, but Lily is right, right pushed up against me every night. And occasionally she will wake me up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next animal on this list is a goose. 
Oh, you could totally beat up a goose. About 60%. Do you know that for a fact? Yes, well, I do. So there was a, a guy that I knew my dad worked with, and uh, he was fly fishing. And so when you fly fish, the, the yeah. line goes way up in the air. And he he hooked into a goose Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. happened to be flying by. It, it happens. Yeah. And he's decided he's reeling this goose in. And he got the goose down. He's, the thing is flying yeah. and flapping. They are very strong. Their their bones are big. Their yeah. wings are really, really big. And apparently he was holding on to this thing by the neck, and it was beating the piss out of him <laughs> with its, with its uh, yeah, wings. Yeah. Now, he killed it. He ended up killing it, um, and he, he took it home and ate it. You yeah, know, yeah. And he, he was, you know, because they were hunters. It was out in yeah. Idaho. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but apparently he was bruised up pretty bad. Afterwards, but yes, you will win in a life or death yeah. battle against a goose. I think you got a yeah. goose. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my I've, dad had to slap a goose away because he was coming after Jace. When that's he was what little. I call it too. And no, he. I mean, he slapped the thing and it it took off. It left, but he was coming onto the boat we were on in the middle of the water. Too. By the way, when you get them pissed off, or swans in particular, too, or a large geese. We, we, remember the goose that we was uh, the geese that were terrifying yeah, that uh, yeah. the complex that yeah. they, in, yeah. Jersey, yeah. in Jersey. Yeah. Geese, yeah, we, we, geese, let's let's be honest geese have bad attitudes they do and i think that they would bring that bad attitude into a fight ducks are more pleasant yes they're they're more skittish yes than, uh, than uh, geese are aggressive geese are. swans yeah. are incredibly aggressive all right what about an eagle Ooh, yeah, okay yeah yeah I get it, it, in, in, in a fight to the death yes though eagles they would again, hurt you bad they would rip you up yeah unlike a goose an eagle uh, an eagle bite and, and then talons, the, and the talons. The talons. The talons. The talons Goose doesn't the have that. And, and uh, By the way, the grip strength on the talons it's is, crazy. is cr incredibly strong. Yep, yep. Uh, so 30% of Americans feel, according to this poll, that they would have a shot. That means 70% of people think they would lose. To an eagle fight. They could uh, throw out an errant... You know, jugular yeah. shot on you. And you never know, you're man. Meat. kill you. That's why you have to put the eagle in a half Nelson who, if you can. Who yeah. makes the first move? I think the eagle, oh, I don't know the eagle hits on your girlfriend. Well, yeah. I'm saying, like, if an, if you're just walking along, Steve, and all of a sudden yeah. an eagle attacks you from behind, I, I'm going to give the odds to the eagle. The, my, the eagle might have it. They've, they've got the higher ground for so sure. So yeah. when you're fighting for your life, I think what you can bring to the match is going to be, um, and it depends, by the way, on the size, your size. Um, you take... You got to fall on them. Right. Put I mean, all your weight on them. But I mean, crush them. They can lift. Uh -oh. They've... There's that sh footage of the eagle flying away with a fawn. Yeah. I mean, they can, yeah. you know, they're, they're they, strong. They have a strong uh, flying I would just cable. grab it by its neck and then, like, slam it on the ground. But what if it's what if it's attached to you? What if it's got its claws? It's it would never on get there. Balls. It would never get there. The fawn. only way it would get to me is if it, if it a, came from behind. If it was coming at me from, like, you know. What if like, it was dressed as a friend? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. You're an eagle! <laughs> Jeff. Uh, Jeff? Jeff? <laughs> only 30% of people say that they could, uh, have a shot against an eagle. I assume we're talking about the bald eagle, right? Uh, that's one I'm going to go. Probably talking, yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's you know, golden there's eagles are big. I mean, uh, they're not. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're large birds, other than large eagles, other than the the professional football team. Yeah, the Don, eagles. Yeah, Don Henley. Okay, are there any? Is there anybody on the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles that you think you could beat? No, on? we're no. going to move on. All right, next is a large dog. Yeah, that's where uh, I start to get afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. A, like a large dog, like a cane corso man. I yeah. don't know, Cujo. Uh, yeah, I, that's Clifford. Where you, that's where you start to fall into the gray area of yeah, that thing could possibly right. kill yeah. me. Clifford's yeah. the size of a house. Actually, could very much kill you. Steve, Clifford's even, not real. No, even ones that aren't that big. I mean, you know, I, I know pit bull owners hate to to hear this type of thing, but their strength, their their jaw strength, and they're smaller in stature. They have killed people on and on they a few do, occasions. and physically that is that is a fact. Uh, you you get a large dog. You get. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, like a Rottweiler, a or Rottweiler. Mastiff, or, uh, that's what this, this that's Snoopy the, that yeah. we have. This uh, this of uh, this female, um, she's she's about cl close to eighty pounds, um, and uh, but strong, yeah, super strong. They but are they out. typically aggressive? That, no, they're very they're yeah, very like benign. The Rottweiler, yeah. that dog scares me, mm. like probably more than a pit bull. Okay, well, like, the Omen. The, the, that was yeah. uh, Damien's yeah. dogs were Rottweilers. Dobermans, as cool as they are, and and I think yeah. they're beautiful dogs. They they intimidate me mm -hmm. a little. They bit. They look very arch. You remember that movie? The they Dober look very militaristic. The Doberman Gang. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, only twenty percent of Americans say they'd have a shot against a large dog. Maybe it's about twenty-two percent. How would you fare against a teacup poodle? 
Uh, I'd have uh, to size them up. can be nasty, man. All right, then you have a uh, chimpanzee. Now, now you're now you're getting into a realm. Uh, I, I point you to the movie uh, Nope. Yeah. Uh, oh it, my God! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chim chimps fight in such a brutal fashion. Yep. Uh, they rip hands off. They rip yeah, genitals no off. They, they rip your face off. They yeah, gouge. Ears, yeah. nose, any soft target. Super they powerful teeth. Yep. Yeah. And, and, it, and the strength level is astronomical. Yeah, yeah. I think I can take a chimp until a certain point, uh, age-wise and, right. and size-wise, right? A, new, a newbie? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. So you, you feel pretty confident with a lot of animals. With a lot of animals. But, okay. but, 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 but with, with, with caveats. Yeah, with caveats. Like, listen, there, uh, an adult chimp or even like a teenage chimp, there's no chance. No. no I don't have a chance. But, but a senior citizen? <laughs> senior citizen. Well, no. Actually, even it gets seniors, worse. Yeah. Then they get old chimp strength. Like, like um, I was just, you know, you, you, you take any of the, um, again, um, what was that? Mr. Jiggs, the famous um, performing yeah. chimp. Yeah. He freaked out at the end of his life, and, and they had to... I mean, he could easily kill somebody. Yeah. yeah. But 18% of people think that they have a shot against him. No, no you That's don't. Tough. <laughs> no, I don't think you do. I would throw eagles at him. All right, then uh, King Cobra. Oof. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no. If you catch the cobra... <sighs> and this is barehanded, right? The right way. Yeah. yeah. If you, yeah, you I mean, got to... Like, people that are snake wranglers, the, I am impressed at their ability. Yeah. They seem to do it with, with no fear. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to approach a King Cobra and, and handle them the way that those people do. So no. I would give the advantage here to the King Cobra. Well, how, okay, hang on a second, though. How um, deadly is their venom? Oh, it's extremely deadly. Like Extre one bite, you're done? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're I remember not... ages ago, I'm starting to interrupt, Stephen, we had Steve Irwin on. Yeah. Before he passed, and I had asked him, okay, how many times you've been bitten in your life? Right. And he said, not once. I could not oh. wrap my mind yeah. around that because... Constantly on that show, he was going up to extremely venomous and dangerous yeah, snakes, getting bitten, and just grabbing them with his bare hands. Look at this stat, Preston. This is remarkable about King Cobra venom. All right, the uh, their venom is not the most potent among venomous snakes, but the amount of neurotoxin they can deliver in a single bite, up to two tenths of a fluid ounce, is enough to kill twenty people or even an yeah. elephant. Dude, I listen. I love oh king cobras. I think they are the coolest of all snakes. <gasps> they speak highly of you. The, thank you. Well, I mean, I think we and that's well, why he's good. We uh, like him a lot. That's why we'll never fight. Um, but I, I'm. You know, terrified. I watched a I, video I, yesterday of a guy. It looked like he was going after this king cobra, and it turned out it was a stick. But it had me hook line right, stick yeah. the whole time until he actually grabbed its neck. But I'm like, dude, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, listen. So you're you're in a situation. I, I'm actually. I'd be more terrified of of like a, like a fair de lance or you know some some of the other super small amount of venom, super toxic. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't realize like. Cobras deliver that much toxin. I I, call, just their their flared head yeah. just look bad. Uh, would, would scare me to. That's death. why Stallone adopted that character for his crime fighting hero, Cobra. I didn't oh. know that. Uh, all right, how about a kangaroo? So, oh no way! Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna lose that one fast. Yeah, even fewer people think they could take out a kangaroo versus a king cobra. King cobra is like uh, 17. percent So when uh, when you get a, a large kangaroo um, fighting, I, I, I actually saw there was a guy who fought a kangaroo to uh, uh, his dog was being attacked, mm -hmm. and he fist fought a kangaroo and won. Mm. Um, so I, kangaroo I, just took off. He was like, yeah. "I'm not doing this." But their legs are so powerful. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they um, also, kind of, they look badass, Some too. of them look jacked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. They have, uh, there's uh, those muscular yeah. um, uh, kangaroos I remember seeing pictures of that were hilarious. So about 15% of people say they could fight and win against a kangaroo. Then you have a wolf. Yeah. Well, a solo wolf or a wolf pack? Uh -huh. A lone wolf. Huh. See, well, I, like, typically... I think about like velociraptors, you know, attacking me uh, like a pack, and, and, and I would lose that way. But I think that... Uh, if I, I think I could handle a lone wolf, I'd I think a, wolves get, even, a, get a bad rap. I don't think they typically attack. No, they, they don't. They are not. They're 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 not normally uh, that way. Uh, though uh, a large wolf, like a like a like a like a, a timber wolf, uh, you know. Yeah. Um. Uh, they're they're pretty formidable. Uh, watch the movie The Gray. Yeah. Uh, you'll 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 appreciate. Yeah. They uh they're they're feral. I mean they yeah. they can. 
I don't know, man. I watched into uh, that mode. Never Cry Wolf and uh, Dances yeah. with Wolves, and those movies were nice. They were nice. Yeah, yeah. so it depends on the wolf and, and It your depends approach. on the so movie. You, so you yeah. think you better... What you got, movie are you being attacked in? Right. Nick, you got a better shot at a uh, at a wolf versus a large dog? Yeah, like if it's uh, two socks, wow. yeah. I'm going to be friends with that thing. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to have fur all over your <laughs> clothes. All right, now we're getting into the ridiculous range. Okay. Uh, crocodile. <laughs> no. no. So so there have been now a fight to the death. Yeah, I'm, I'm not talking about getting yeah. away. No, you're you're talking about a fight to the death. You're gonna, getting you're away. You're going to kill it. You you have beat this animal. So there have been stories of people who have used that eye thing, the gouging of the eyes, yeah. and and uh, you know. Um, Taking it to the point of death. I mean, the croc just has got it all over a human in, in design. But uh, there have been cases of people. I don't know if they've nest, if they've killed the croc barehanded, mm. but have certainly caused enough damage to survive. About eight percent of people think they could take out a crocodile. What do you think, Case? For you? Oh, I mean, the, I, I, how big is the croc? Um, you know what I mean? Like it. Yeah, I what? think five foot and below. I got this okay. one. Standing yeah. or yeah. long. Well, long. I don't know. They, they, However, you when they get the angry, they get up on their hind legs Remember, and run. Yeah. I saw it in a Disney movie. <laughs> Remember, Casey has come face to face with alligators. Before. Yeah, and, and, and survived. Yeah, yeah. that uh, the ten footer. I don't yeah. think I had a chance against them, but the other guys, uh, the smaller ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about an elephant? <laughs> so there was just the footage you saw re yesterday, Preston. Right? They came out. Did you see the uh, the uh, elephant attack so somebody? Safari tusks flipped the car over there was an 80 year old Jesus. woman in the car in the jeep and she died oh yeah. wow yeah and i have seen footage of of an elephant throwing around a human being yeah. like it's nothing like yeah. it's a rag doll and stepping on them and, and just uh, you're done yeah I, I don't think anybody ever so there, but but apparently five percent of people think that they so elephants routinely either. you know if they, they'll 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 kill lions if they're if they're taken on uh-huh I'm yeah. watching uh, elephant beat up uh, crocodiles. Oh, it's a good fight. A video right now. Yeah. Okay. At a water at a uh, an African watering hole. Hang on a second. I want to go to this call because Aaron has come across king cobra in the wild. Uh, Aaron, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Gadzooks. Gadzooks, what's up, bud? Uh, so we were. Uh, I was in the military, uh, and uh, about 16 years ago, we were on a training op in Thailand. And uh, myself and a couple other Marines were walking over to the radio tent, which is uh, pretty far away from everything else for the sake of security and safety. And we're uh, just, you follow the black cable to the tent. It was the middle of the night. We saw this black cable off to the side of our one that we were following. We're like, oh, I wonder what that cable's doing there. Oh, no. And uh, myself and another Marine uh, would go up to it. And uh, so it starts moving. We're like, oh, it's a snake. So, you know, us being <laughs> stupid Marines, we do what we do. We start poking it with a stick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my God. And uh, other Marines come over because there's commotion and reward. And um, they start shining flashlights at it. And it starts hissing and or what we sounded like hissing. And it's striking the ground. <sighs> and so this probably went on for a few minutes. My staff sergeant came over and said, what are you idiots doing? Yep. And uh, we said, oh, you know, we're just messing with this snake staff sergeant. And he was like, you, you, you guys are going to die. <laughs> and uh, so he took it upon himself to uh, take this brick, this half brick that he found, and just by chance got lucky, threw it, hit the snake, and killed it. What? We didn't know it was a king cobra until afterwards. Wow. I have, I have a picture of myself. Uh, I don't even know if I can find it anymore. Standing in the middle of the field, holding it with its with its fins out. Yeah. Uh, just standing there at a normal like you know I'm five eight, and uh, it is going down the side of my body and wrapped around a little bit on the ground. Wow. So we looked it up too. We had no idea how dangerous it was. Didn't know what it was, and just like you said, kill an elephant. We're like, man, we are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. I believe it. Wow, uh -huh. you missed it. You, you, it was a close one. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it, man. That's terrifying. Look at the picture up on the screen here, Preston. There's a gentleman holding a uh, king cobra. That well, it looks like it's about 15 feet long. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. All right, so after the crocodile and elephant, uh, then you have the gorilla. So <laughs> the sheer power, yeah. the strength of a gorilla. There was the footage of, of the, the two zoo uh, workers. Yeah. Who, yes. uh, they, uh, now, mind you, gorillas aren't inherently aggressive, they're not. I mean, but if you're going to fight one. Yeah. So if you're fighting one, 
my wife had the uh, the the thrill of going uh, with um, uh, you know Kelly here at work, um, going to uh, Africa and, and doing the the gorilla watch. I want to fight you. And uh, they, you know, they 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 tell you to stay very s- small and sort of s- submissive, and yeah. and then you make love to them. No, yeah. and then they, uh, <laughs> but but they're very they're very gentle. But when when they do war with each other, and you've ever seen footage, yeah, I mean, you're talking. What are they six times? The, the strength, strength of, 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 at a, least. of a man, yeah. yeah. At least. Uh, even chimps are, I think. Yeah, Imagine yeah, yeah. a silverback gorilla, which, by the way, I was telling Casey and Nick yesterday, a silverback gorilla, male gorilla, only has a three-inch long penis, but it can bang whatever it wants, <laughs> whenever it wants. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Two more animals on this list. Uh, a lion. Okay, so we've gotten into... You're dead. Who in their right mind would ever think that they would actually, but, but apparently yeah. about 5% of people polled in this think that they would have I wonder, a legit shot. Yeah. Don't tell me you. No, 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 okay. no. Uh, listen. Against uh, a lion. But I, I, I'll, I'll pose it this way. All right. I have a 5% chance of winning against a lion. Do you know what I mean? Like so, it, like I have, a, I feel like I have a zero. You believe the odds are strongly against you. I have a zero percent chance of okay. of, uh, of beating up a uh, an elephant. A goose? I, uh, no, I have a one hundred percent chance of beating up a goose. But I, there is just the the no, a lion would tear me to shreds. You're yeah. saying on the off chance there is a small percentage that you could pull off some sort of man- move or maneuver. Yes. What does anything come to mind? If I can jam my fist down on <laughs> that guy's throat. Have uh, you ever seen the, 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 you've seen the maw of a lion, right? Listen, and, and, you're, you're, and I've you're, seen. You're, you're basically, your arm would be a churro. I would go all the way, I would shove it all the way down. Like, yeah. You know, and that's. No, dude, you'd have yeah. to, you'd, you, you know, you see. Like Steve, <laughs> Casey pulls his arm back out. It's just a skeleton. All the meat has come off. It's like when you well, were to take a, uh, yeah. a chicken wing uh-huh. and yeah. you have to pull all the meat yeah. right off of Casey's it. Casey's like, well, so yeah. much for that. Yeah, <laughs> The lion's picking meat out of his teeth. Well, mm-hmm. it's kind of mm-hmm. like... Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Drax. Uh, how about that left leg now? <laughs> no Drax. fuss, no muss. Yeah. Drax in uh, Guardians 2, he, you know, in the very beginning, right. he jumps into that beast. Mm-hmm. And now he wasn't the one who killed it, but right, like, yeah. I feel like... If you were to crawl into the tiger vulnerable inside. and with your two knives keep cutting away at it. Yeah. All right. A whale swallows you. Yes. And you've got a weapon. Yeah. Okay. Stab its heart. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in its stomach. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, but. Okay. It's okay. just as thick on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Could you conceivably. Yeah. If you had the proper cutlery uh, or like, you know, a scuba, like a diving knife and you were in a whale. Yeah. Come on. Could you cut your way out? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I also, I'm calling a little bit no fair because we, in these scenarios, don't have weapons. But these guys do have weapons. They, you know, they got guns. The, the, no, they got their fangs and their claws. Mm, but that's, no, that's no, no, their no, no, physicality. No, no. That's, that's what they but, are. But we have teeth and we have nails as well. Yeah. Ours just aren't Our as big like, like theirs. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's the matchup. So I would say a lion, I have a 1% chance of perhaps maybe getting that... that that special sauce. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read this exactly as it says. For starters, we are unlikely to end up in a whale stomach in one piece. But on top of that, we would not survive very long. First of all, there is no air or oxygen in their stomachs, so we wouldn't be able to breathe. Additionally, whales are carnivores, so we would be digested by the enzymes in their stomach. So you go right in. So you've seen like like a like a like a a whale sh- a whale shark is I mean, again. You, or you see like um you know, so you end up somehow. It has happened where you're in inside briefly. If you and you're you've got scuba equipment on. Yeah, Stop that's it. what I was wondering yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're got, protected. Why a would you be bit? in the water in right. the first place? Right, you're scuba diving. You're scuba diving, and somehow the the whale <laughs> opens up its maw, and no. you're inside. You're in with a knife. What would prohibit you? I, if you can cut your way in from the outside, you can't. You, you can't. You can't cut your way in from the outside. That's impossible. <laughs> you what? you don't think wait, that wait, there's out a from shark. the inside. You are trying. To, yes, yeah. I, I think you have a zero percent chance if you ever end up inside of the mouth of a whale of getting out. Uh, just as much of a, a chance, zero percent chance of if you're on the outside of the whale knifing your way in to get inside the mouth. Well, mm. no, all you need to do is pierce enough. You know, yeah, that's, Pino- all, that's Pino- all you have to, to hurt do. It and they want to spit. Yeah, Pinocchio gave us this false sense. Yeah, yeah. that and, we and could live inside a whale. It ain't you can't happening. See, it. it's like completely pitch black in there. By the way, that's, yes. you're Pinocchio a diver. Lied. You have a light. Oh, Pinocchio okay. lit a fire in there. He did. Yeah. Yep. 
It's like, the, it's, like the, it's like the, the fire-breathing dragons that have those guys on stools. Oh, that sit yeah. in the mouth yeah. and ignite the uh, the gas that comes out. <laughs> Andrea's theory. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, the, the, that is much more logical than it is. It's, it's, it's a troll, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Troll in the mouth Lives of the dragon. in the mouth of the dragon. All right, the last, we got to take a break. The last uh, uh, animal on the list is a grizzly bear. And it's the the people, the least amount of people said that they would have a shot against a grizzly bear. Of all the it's, animals. It's just, so watch the 6%. revenant. Watch Man oh in the God. Wilderness. Yeah. yeah. There is actually a, a, a movie about uh, this couple that they hike... Uh, well into the forest, he's going to propose. He's he's not a very good hiker. He hasn't plotted out the path path well. They're str they don't know where they are. They get lost, and and a grizzly bear attacks him. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the most horrifying things that you could possibly imagine. And so for the rest of the movie, she's trying to um, get back to civilization and elude the bear who's after her. Yeah, I yeah I, yeah, I think he got zero shot. No Siberian tiger on in that a fight. List, huh? No, no Siberian tiger. I think the lion kind of, yeah. you know, covered that part of it. So, all right, interesting. Uh, discuss amongst yourselves, coworkers today, uh, and uh, with all this carnivore talk, let's give away some uh, Nebraska Brazilian Steakhouse uh, gift card. I have a hundred dollar gift Ooh. card. <gasps> we'll take caller number twenty at two one five two six three WMMR, and you can enjoy a one of a kind dining experience with fifteen cuts of meat and fish, grilled to perfection, and served table side at a Braza, Nebraza Brazilian Steakhouse. Uh, new location is 20th and JFK in Center City, and the original is in Horsham, and you can find out about them online at nebraza.com. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. 93.3 WMMR. I totally forgot when we had uh, Allison Sweeney on. Uh, the name of her movie is One Bad Apple on uh, on Lifetime. And I'd ask Steve if you remember that song by the Osmonds. Yep. Marissa, grab it. I forgot to play it for oh, you guys. Oh, damn it. Let's hear it. So here's the hook from that. One bad apple don't spoil a whole bunch, girl. Oh, give it one more try before you give up on love. One bad apple don't spoil a whole Donnie with the high part there. Well, hey, I don't care what they say. I don't care. He was definitely the the Michael, yeah. yeah. You know, if he had the Osmonds versus the Jacksons, he was he was definitely the Michael Jackson out of that group. He had, his voice was yeah. better than everybody else. Yes, yeah. and that's why he his career went on much longer. Yeah. Yeah. Who would win in a fight, the Osmonds or the Jacksons? Jacksons, yeah. Jacksons, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gordy, you well, your eyes were, out. Well, their dad used to beat them. So. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, they got used they to were, it. They were a little more hardened. They had leathery skin. There was not a lot of beating going on in the Osmonds. I, yeah, I don't know. Mormon was there, family. Was their dad hard on them? No, they were very supportive and loving. It's what was we it? heard, yeah. Okay. Well, but if you, sure. in a fight, my money's on the Jacksons. Yeah. Maybe Especially it was... Tito. Maybe it was um, Brian Wilson's dad. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, I think he was hard on He hit on those uh, guys. Brian so hard on the side of his head that he rendered the ear deaf. Damn. Yep. He was uh, physically abusive. That's the hook of the song. Marissa had the whole thing. Let me hear what that sounds like from the beginning. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. So 1970s, yeah. early 70s. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you've been hurt by that look on your face, girl. So come on and save me to your happy world. You need love, but you're afraid that if you give in, someone else will come along and suck you to your game. Osmond's God. of the day. God, I remember that song. Uh, the, the, uh, a girl that I had a crush on growing up had a massive crush on Tommy Osmond. Oh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of girls did. wanted to kill him. He had the big smile. Yeah. All right. Um, bizarre File. Here we go. No. Bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. All right. A few stories to go through. We'll start with this one out of South Korea. It's Korea, not Karina. <laughs> Where them out. My Karina. Karina. Uh, no, uh, J-I-B-S, which is a private broadcaster. Jibs, yes, yeah. we'll call them. Uh, on the southern island of Jeju, 
has started disciplinary proceedings against one of its news anchors after a live news segment led to public outrage with accusations that the anchor was under the influence of alcohol while on air. This is Jibs bringing you all the news of Jiju. The controversy unfolded during the 8 News live broadcast when co-anchor uh, Cho Chang Bom uh, exhibited difficulty when pronouncing words and displaying <laughs> unnatural behavior, right, raising suspicions among viewers. Uh, during the broadcast, the anchor struggled with pronunciation, notably stumbling over a sentence about the start of election campaign material distribution. He fumbled words like candidate promises and voting precautions multiple times, and there were moments where the screen remained without any commentary from the anchor for roughly seven seconds each. Which is a decision. Which is a long time. Uh-huh. Uh, after the broadcast, uh, the Jibs website's viewers uh, forum was inundated with complaints questioning whether the anchor had been broadcasting while intoxicated, noting his flushed face <laughs> and accusing the broadcaster of being visibly drunk on air, therefore disrespecting the audience. Sure. I'd, I'd love to see the footage. I wouldn't understand it, obviously. Have, but yeah. yeah, me too. Jibs issued a statement expressing regret for any inconvenience caused to its audience, and they removed the disrupted segment from its website and official YouTube channel. I, I, it's... I've... <laughs> You ever seen any drunk yes. anchors? Yes. So there were there was a couple. Um, Roger Grimsby in New York um, and Tex Antoine, the famous uh, like an ABC News team in New York. Um, Grimsby would drink, and wow. uh, yeah, you'd see he'd be all flush. And now he's always professional, but it, you'd words would be slurred. Was he the guy that said if you're getting raped, you just should just lay back and enjoy Joy, it? That's Tex Antoine who said that right after a story about a little girl oh being sexually assaulted. Oh my God! Yeah. I think you might have been having a few that and day. And that was actually Texas' last day on air, believe it or wow. not. Wow, wow. All right, moving on. An Alabama woman is in custody after cops found more than four pounds of cocaine in the backpack of a three-year-old in her home. Wow. Among other discoveries. Uh, deputies got a tip. 35-year-old uh, Tierra Takora Hill was stashing illegal drugs in her home in Mobile, Alabama, so they... Uh, shattered her after she left her residence, finally pulling her over to traffic stop. They said inside her vehicle was about 3.3 pounds of coke, a small amount of pot, a handgun as well. Uh, that was nothing compared to what they found at her house. Deputies say that there, uh, there were four unattended children, ages 3 to 15, in residence, as well as two more handguns and more drugs, specifically about 4.4 pounds of cocaine found in the three-year-old's blue backpack, which the youngster was wearing at the time. Backpack, backpack. <laughs> another two-plus pounds of cocaine was found in another backpack, along with firearms. Uh, Hill has been charged with cocaine trafficking, marijuana possession, evidence tampering, and chemical in, uh, chemical endangerment of a what, child What's the most well. you ever got? A snackable, right? Yeah, never, yeah, never, never pounds coke. of yeah. stuff, no. Uh, one of Britain's... This is, a, this is a case of a police force not giving up. One of Britain's... Most wanted fugitives has been arrested at Heathrow Airport after 27 years on the run. Wow. Richard Burroughs, who is now 80 years old, is accused of historic sexual abuse of kids. He was detained at the airport on Thursday after returning to the UK from Thailand. Uh, the four said that uh, they had been, they had waited since December 1997 when he failed to attend court to face trial for two counts of serious sexual assault and 11 counts of indecent assault. The charges relate to alleged abuse between 1969 and 1971. Wow. Uh, the inspector, Eleanor Atkinson, uh, said our determination to locate Burroughs has not faltered over the last 27 years and his arrest marks a significant step towards uh, forward in this case and bringing a closure to all those involved and said they would like to thank the public for their information that uh, they have provided over the years. So he is being held in custody right now. So this now. makes me think of the Jimmy Savile story. You know, the, oh, the, the guy. So this guy, and you can yeah. watch the, the documentary on Netflix, this guy spent decades, decades sexually abusing kids, though he was a beloved figure, hung out with royalty and, and uh, you know, Jagger and, and the bands, they all loved him. No one knew. Some people knew, but um, he passed away before he was ever... Yeah, they never got yeah, him. Yeah, they never got never him. Did. A man has pleaded guilty to stealing a toilet made entirely from 18 karat gold and worth more than $6 million from the English stately home where Winston Churchill was born. So they got one of these guys. James Sheen pleaded guilty to burglary in the Crown Court on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm taking a jump. The fully functioning toilet was installed at uh, Blenheim Place or Palace in 2019 as part of an exhibition. Uh, by Italian artist uh, Maurizio Catalan hey. called Victory is Not an Option. 
Uh, the unusual artwork, which was nicknamed America, was stolen in September in 2019 that year, just days after the exhibition opened, and it had been plumbed into the building, so the theft also caused significant damage of flooding. Uh, Sheen appeared in court via video link from a prison where he's serving a 17-year sentence for various thefts. Among others, he is serving time for stealing uh, tractors and high-value trophies from the National Horse Racing Museum. He, 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 str he steals some strange things. Yes. The a, toilet would be at the top of the list. At uh, Blenheim Palace, the toilet was installed in a room next to the one where Churchill was born. A statement announcing the exhibition said the work could be perceived as a comment on the social, political, and economic disparities in the United States. Uh, three other men were charged in connection with the toilet set back in November, but they have pleaded not guilty. This guy has pleaded guilty mm -hmm. to this whole thing. And then we'll do one more story and wrap it up. Speaking of guilt, uh, it was written all over this guy's leg. A Florida man copped to the theft charges for refusing to pay for a $250 Waffle House tattoo that was inked on his right calf. That's pretty cool. With not much of a defense available to him, Max Kredgkind uh, pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor charge related to him obtaining the tattoo from the Ink God's Parlor in St. Petersburg. After accepting the plea, the judge ordered him to pay a total of $675 in fines, court costs, and fees. Apparently, cops reported he had been drinking when he requested the five-inch Waffle House tattoo in black and gray, but it would have cost $100 more if he wanted it rendered in the usual yellow. And when it came time to pay for it, he only had $6 on him. Oh, my God. And refused all options to satisfy his debts. He was, That wouldn't even cover one W. And then he just left. Uh, Rex Gent uh, was arrested and booked into the county jail where he spent the night before uh, his $150 bond was posted by a neighbor. Like, he couldn't even pay the $150 bond for that. And there you go. That's all I have in the Bizarre File for you this morning. All right. One more of these $100 gift cards to give away courtesy of our friends at Nebraza Brazilian Steakhouse. If you are caller number eight at 215-263-WMMR, you will get it. If you're looking for a fantastic place to book uh, your event or a party, Nebraza Brazilian Steakhouse, great place for office parties, private functions, birthdays, graduations, any celebration. Two great lo locations to choose from now, Center City and in Horsham. So get complete information online at nebraza.com. Caller number eight, we give you the gift card. We'll be back in just a moment, so stay with us. Bringing us that song at 1023 on this Thursday morning. Pretty cloudy all day long today. Maybe even a chance for showers throughout the day, depending on where you are. High about 54 degrees. Uh, lightly breezy. We we got a break on um, the heavy winds. Yes. Yesterday, which were destructive and uh, deadly uh, in some of the areas as well. So uh, thankfully, that's come and gone for now. Uh, tomorrow, partly cloudy, high of about 50 and uh, mid 50s on Saturday. Next week is is looking wonderful. We're headed towards you know feeling like it's full on spring mm. very very soon. So I cannot wait. Yep. That's a, that's a welcome occurrence for sure. All right, today's lesson question. We're going to give away four pack of tickets for Adventure Aquarium's Bubble Bash. And the question we'll ask this morning, man, I don't, um, Harry Helmet does gutter repair, which similarly phallic company does fence repair. <laughs> man, you think anybody will remember this? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Harry Helmet does gutter repair. Which similarly phallic company does fence repair? That's from earlier this morning around uh, 8.30. 215-263-WMMR, if you remember and you feel comfortable saying it on the air, <laughs> call right now and we'll set you up with the prize if you do. In the meantime, we're going to do the trash. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Okay, see, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold it, hold it. I have two different ones oh, here. Oh, good. Which one would you like me to do? This one. I, okay, I, I, thank, you. thank you. All right, uh, it's brought to you this morning by Mini Melts of America. Breaking ice cream news. You can get Mini Melts ice cream delivered right to your door on the Wawa app. You're just a few clicks away from enjoying your favorite Mini Melts flavor. Download the Wawa app today. What's happening this morning, Steve? Well, the producers of the animated series Invincible have officially recast Ezra Miller's role in season two. Show owners say Ezra did a wonderful job as D.A. Sinclair, but now they want someone who isn't straight out of their goddamn mind. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Michael Jackson's estate is blocking lawyers for Wade Robson and James Safechuck from getting Jackson's legal file because it contains pictures of Jackson's penis. 
Right now, the lawyers are going with their fallback, fallback plan, which is having Bubbles the Chimp sketch Jackson's penis from memory. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And finally, Chance the Rapper, revealing that his wife of five years, Kristen Corley, has filed for divorce. Apparently, she has already secured the services of Shyster the Lawyer. <laughs> and that's your high level All right, we're looking for an answer to this question. Harry Helmet does gun repair, which similarly, Fallot Company does fence repair. And we will go to, let's see, we got Mike. Hi, Mike. Who wants the answer? Hey, Mike, morning, buddy. Morning, how are you? Good. Mike, who does fence repair? Engorged Peen. Yes, Engorged Peen. <laughs> yep, hang on, Mike. You just got yourself four bag of tickets to Venture Aquarium Bubble Bash running through April 28th. You can pop in the spring at Bubble Bash featuring Insta-worthy photo spots with larger-than-life bubbles and a shimmering shark cage. It's extended hours this week, by the way. And an underwater scavenger hunt as well. Purchase tickets at adventureaquarium.com. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! Yeah! Not up yet. Brought to you this morning by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. You can get free seed uh, every year. Free seeding. Just call 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. Well, in case you did not hear it, Made in America has been canceled for the second year in a row. Yeah. The festival announced the cancellation on social media and its official website yesterday. A specific reason was not outlined, and a representative for Made in America referred questions back to the statement, which read, As purveyors of change, the Made in America executive production team is reimagining a live music experience that affirms our love and dedication to music and the work we do. We promised an exciting return to the festival. And uh, they didn't provide a timeline for the return of a festival. Uh, a lineup had not been announced. Uh, the statement continued saying, Since its inception, this groundbreaking festival has celebrated music and community from creating a space for fans to connect, to uplifting local small businesses and sharing uh, a light on important causes. It has strived for accessibility, eliminating barriers through affordable tickets and location. I'm not course, so sure it's, um, it's going to come back. Yeah, in August of last year, a month before the festival was scheduled to take place on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway with Lizzo and SZA as the headliners, uh, they announced the festival wouldn't happen due to severe circumstances outside of production control. And then I don't ever remember hearing what those severe issues One were. One of them right. was suggested to be the fact that Lizzo at that point had been drawn into this um, sexual harassment Right. sort of situation, yeah. which oh, is still right. ongoing. Yeah. And but, she was a headliner. Yeah. But, I mean, they were still, I still think they could have done it. Oh, know? they sure they could have yeah. done it. I went to the first three or four, and I uh, am of the opinion that the way that they were originally built with a massive rock act and the yeah. massive hip hop, hip hop or urban act uh, complemented each other really, really well. And then the first one was Pearl Jam and Jay-Z. And at one point, Pearl Jam was Jay-Z's backing band. Mm -hmm. And that's what, to me, what festivals should be about. A little bit of sampling from a lot of different things. It's a cool spot. It was a really cool location. And I really, really enjoyed the first two or three. And then it just became less and less of that and more uh, focused on... Hip-hop. Hip-hop and, and urban acts. And to me, that it, that's, I mean, that's out of my demo... But it's also out of other people's demos. Well, yeah. and you also have, uh, you know, the, the the roots. You know, we, we have a festival that that, is, that addresses that in a much more varied and eclectic way already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, uh, yeah, musically it hasn't spoke to me for a long time. So, um, yeah, but, but there obviously it draws a lot of people and it's, uh, you know, going to be a disappointment to some. So they, um, yeah, I don't know when they say they're going to reschedule, but who knows when. The 2021 version of Papa Roach's Last Resort with uh, Jarris Johnson has earned gold status. Uh, that version came about during the pandemic when Jarris Johnson went viral with his version on social media. And then Papa Roach invited him to collaborate and rework the track. That's a, video, a video followed. The original studio version of that single has yet to receive any certification in the United States, despite having crossed over a billion streams on Spotify. Uh, platinum album or single in the U.S. represents a million units, and a gold signifies 500,000. In support, I think this is a really cool idea. In support of the American Red Cross, Black Veil Brides are hosting a virtual blood drive uh, during their U.S. Bleeders Tour. And I was like, well, how is this going to work? Yeah. Uh, I love this. <clears throat> Fans attending their concert can present their proof of a blood donation 
and receive an exclusive merchandise package consisting of a signed poster, a pin, and a patch. That's a pretty, yeah, cool, that's pretty cool idea yeah. to get people, you know, without having a dedicated blood drive per se, if you go out and donate, you will qualify to get this little freebie at just their concert. Show, you, show your proof and you're good to go. I think it's a great idea. The I band, don't know this band, though. Do you guys I, know? I just know them by name, Case, but okay. I, I thought the idea was cool and I wanted to, to give it some love. Uh, the band noted that every pint of blood has the potential to save as many lives as three. So this combined effort between the band and the fan can have a profound effect. Uh, the blood drive was inspired by an upcoming single they have called Bleeders. Um, so I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. And um, we obviously have our blood drive coming up. We've got information on that down the road. Uh, so it will be happening this summer. So we'll give you a heads up. Probably next week, I think, is when we're planned on making a specific announcement about that. Former Rage Against the Machine guitarist Tom Morello has announced an intimate solo show, but it's in London. The 59-year-old is booked at the small 1,500-seat ballroom. You sound like you're from London. <laughs> uh, June 13th. Uh, the announcement follows news from earlier this year that Rage disbanded for the third time. Drummer Brad Wilk broke the news in January. Uh, so Tom is going to be playing a solo gig. And then finally, I thought this was nice. Though he says he'd given up on Foreigner ever getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Original frontman Lou Graham has been excitedly watching the public voting where Foreigner has been solidly in the top three since it opened during early February. Graham says that uh, he's been particularly gratified by the active campaign huh. led by hit-making hit producer Mark Ronson, who is Foreigner founder Mick Jones' son-in-law and has recruited musical friends such as Paul McCartney, Dave Grohl, Slash, Jack Black, uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Chad Smith, and others expressing disbelief that the group isn't in, in the hall yet. He said, I think, this is uh, Lou Graham speaking, he said, I think he's a pretty creative guy, talking about uh, Mark Ronson, uh, That's uh, and it's pretty good. There hasn't been anything boisterous or outlandish. It's just kind of, it's telling the story the way he sees it from his vantage point with his stepdad and stuff. It makes sense. Uh, Graham adds that he was particularly stoked by Paul McCartney's video. Yeah, that is pretty cool. In which uh, Paul <clears throat> says, Foreigner, not in the Hall of Fame? What the F? Uh, Graham has Go said to hell! that if uh, Foreigner is selected, he fully intends to attend the ceremony in Cleveland uh, during the fall and to perform as well. Uh, he was with Foreigner from 1976 to 1989 and then 92 to 93, serving as Mick Jones' principal songwriter writing partner. Uh, the two were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2013, the same year that Graham uh, published his uh, memoir, Jukebox Hero, My Five Decades in Rock and Roll. So I hope they make it in. Yeah, yeah. it'd be nice. Really At cool. this point, yep. also, you you always want to make <laughs> It's always nice when they're alive. Yep. You know? And that's the last item in music news. We have... One more break to take. When we return, we'll get the letter of the day for the Word of the Week prize, and then we give that sucker away tomorrow already as it's No Sad Bro Friday. We'll be back in a moment, so stay with us, please. Kristen and Steve. The Kristen and Steve show, the beautiful people. Not us, that's yeah, the name of that song. 1042, and we are wrapping up our radio program for today, an enjoyable day, and I would like to thank our guests on the show. We had uh, Mr. Brian Prop yeah. join us early on, and Brian's got a uh, hockey event coming. It's his second annual uh, game. It is the Brian Prop Celebrity Face-Off Classic, and uh, Riley Cote is going to be there. A bunch of people are going to be playing. Um, and it's for the Headstrong Foundation. It's a great organization. Yep, and it's at uh, Iceworks in Aston. So if you're interested, you can uh, you can check that out, pick up your tickets. It's very inexpensive, and there's a dinner, and everybody's going to be hanging out afterwards, and uh, different uh, packages that you can buy into. So we thank Brian for being on. And then the lovely Allison Sweeney. Yay! Uh, whose uh, new Hallmark movie is called Bad Apple. A Hannah Swenson mystery is on uh, One Bad Apple. I'm sorry, not A Bad Apple. It's like the, the song. One or, Bad you know, oh, yeah. Do I have the hook of that? Yeah. Yes, you do. One Bad Apple, don't spoil the whole bunch, girl. Oh, give it one more try before you give up on love. Remember that old toe tapper, Pierre? I do. Yeah. Is that Donnie in the high voice? That was Donnie, Donnie in the high voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I was not expecting that. Uh, yeah, he's so, a little bit country. He's a little bit rock and roll. Yes. Yeah. So thank you to Allison Sweeney for being on. Uh, that movie is coming out on 
Saturday. And then thank you to Nabraza Brazilian Yay! Steakhouse. Nabraza.com. They have a new location in Center City, 20th and JFK, and it's their original Horsham location. So thanks to Soul for bringing by all that great food and those $100 gift cards that we gave away. We had a good time with those. How are you doing today? Very well. And Excellent. we finally have a little break in the weather, which we'll take. Yeah. Oh, my God. Blue sky above I, your head right yeah, now. I can I see it out the window. I, I, I am not one for seasonal, uh, you know. Depression. Depression. Does affect, yeah. But, I mean, like, enough is enough. Uh, well, my arc was almost completed. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. now I can put it aside till next year. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, yeah, but it's nice outside. So cool. um, you're free to go and run freely through the flowers. Wonderful. Through the mud. Yeah. Yeah. She'll yeah. do it. Yeah, through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got we got and a month puddles. worth of uh, rain in like two days, right. apparently. So. Madness. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, running through the mud and uh, dipping your toe in the grass and everything, you realize uh, this month, Pierre, marks the 20th anniversary of you putting your toes into the grass against the will of the uh, grounds crew at Citizen Bank Park when the when the park had just opened. We did a broadcast there. My dad and I were talking about that this weekend. And my Today's dad came down. Uh, this, this week is the anniversary. Okay. So the ballpark opened 20 years ago this week, and uh, they weren't finished yet. And our buddy John Brazier was kind enough to give us a tour, and he took us out on the field, and John says No, we Pierre, were broadcasting, though. We were, yeah. yeah. And, but, and then we got a tour of the, the building and of, of the grass, and John says, now, Pierre, don't go out on the uh, field because they're going to get upset. And Pierre says, yeah, no problem. And then he probably oh takes God. his feet off, <laughs> he takes his shoes off, walks right out on, rubs his toes in the grass, I, and I saw the looks of some of the grounds keepers, and they were not happy with you. And they're they're never happy. They're never. And so no. in retrospect, you 100% did the right thing. I'm proud of your efforts. And it was 20 years ago this week. It's interesting because Bill Weston was on his way up to accept the job as program director, listening to that broadcast. <laughs> broadcast and he turned to his wife um, and uh, he said to her, that's going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's gonna reel that guy in. That's <laughs> never happening again. And then... Um, I think it was six or seven years later when it was one of our anniversaries, we went back to Rittenhouse Square and I had everyone take their shoes off. <laughs> and I had Rodney take his shoes off, everyone that was with us. And we we're rubbing our feet in the grass and I came back and he's laughing hysterically. I go, what? And he goes, I told Connie that that would just never happen again. <laughs> and I realized you're beyond control. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. Well, 20 years ago, that's yeah. crazy. All right, we need to get a letter from you, buddy. Yes. All right, here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. All right, the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter... E as in electric. All right, we'll give away a four-pack of tickets tomorrow to the session of your choice for the Atlantic City Beer and Music Festival, April 12th and 13th, featuring music from... Hot Mulligan saves the day, and Goldfinger, over 100 breweries, are pouring over 400 different brews... At the AC Convention Center, tickets and information at acbeerfest.com. Uh, what do you have on your show today? Well, speaking of AC, uh, Maynard James Keenan will be there this weekend uh, in a variety of forms. So we've got a block coming up, also a block of Primus. And we continue covers week at 1 p.m. We've been doing covers all this week uh, in the 1 o'clock hour. And um, let's see, yesterday was Wednesday. Tuesday, I had posted a little video about it. And... Um, we got a, a tweet back, or it was, I guess, on Instagram, and we got a response back from Trey Cool ah. of Green Day saying, please play um, Working Class Hero, the John Lennon song, in parentheses, our version. Ah. And so I acknowledged that request and played that yesterday as part of our covers. Uh, it's a great version. They That's very John's cool. Voice. Yeah, they insert John's actual voice at the end of the song. Huh. Brilliant version of Working Class Hero by Green Day, but um, it, it, it turns out Trey Cool was, was aware of it. That's I love awesome. that. Yeah. Very nice. Anyway, so we'll do more covers. Oh, and we've got Roger Daltrey tickets for his Keswick show that you announced, was it Monday, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, loved what you were you're playing uh, the Daltrey stuff and the Who, and it was, it was great, you know, just to hear all that stuff. This is so fantastic. Much stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, we did a Who cover, um, I think, on Monday, April Fool's Day. The Who cover, Elton, Saturday night's all right for fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just, And then I played somebody that covered The Who before that. Um, I can't remember who. But anyway, Who. Anyway, we'll have Roger Daltrey tickets. Love it. All right, let me thank our sponsors. Preston and Steve Show is brought to you today by Duncan, and the Preston and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Acme Markets, fresh foods, local flavors. Uh, tomorrow, give away our Word of the Week prize. No sad bro. And everything else that comes along with it, connoisseur, stuff like that. So we will see you tomorrow. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Bye-bye, gang.
Thank mm -hmm. you.